All right. So we're streaming live right now in multiple different places. We got Facebook to my left, we got Instagram to my right, and we got YouTube right here in the middle. Um, so just give me a quick uh, thumbs up on the uh, YouTube side if everything can be heard. It looks like everything is working well on our end as far as levels are concerned. But I want to make sure that we're doing all that we can to make sure that things sound good. Now, if you're on Instagram or you're on Facebook, the best place to watch what's going to be transpiring is on YouTube. The reason why is, is that there's no way right now to integrate all three platforms in one and make them an interactive experience where we can actually physically host questions on the page. So if you want to ask questions and you want it to be engaged with, the best place to do that is on YouTube. And you can find that on Instagram and in our stories or if you're on Facebook, it's the very first comment that I put that has the link to the, the YouTube channel. So you can watch it live there. We'll do our best to try to integrate these questions. Mason Mejia is working remotely from his house and he's gonna be importing these onto YouTube. So I just want people to know that if they're not familiar with what's going on here already. So just, uh, just be aware, I'll, I'll come back in periodically and uh, you know make sure that, that people understand this, but definitely encourage people, you see them in the commentary and they're like, I don't see the picture, or I don't hear this, it's because it's all happening on YouTube and we're just trying to involve as many people as possible. Hopefully, in the near term, there will be software that will allow us to stream all of these platforms at once without having to download like 20 different broadcasting pieces of software to do it. Um, so that's where we are. Um, so a couple of uh, housekeeping things I just wanted to remind people about is we do have a Patreon now. We have three different levels of Patreon. One as low as $4.99 a month. There's one at $19.99 a month and one at $49.99 a month. Now you may be asking yourself, what do these things include? Well, the, the cheapest one, the $4.99, is a gets some members only live streams every month things like this but are, are for members only and they we get more into specifics because it's such a small group private q and a's that we do there we also offer exclusive discounts and deals stuff like our new pedal boards that are going to be releasing all the people who are part of our membership platform will have access to these pedal boards a week before anybody else does even before the dealerships so they have some you know privileged access there they also uh, will get uh, notified of early releases and get some discount coupons and free shipping and stuff like that. The next tier from there is the sort of deluxe tier. This is at $20 a month, and this includes all of the standard privileges. Plus, you can have some email exchanges with me if you want to do like a one-on-one -on -one tutorial uh, with your pedal board. You're having some difficulty. You want some advice. These are things that can be happening on an ongoing basis. So that's something that is, that is useful for some people. And then there's a third tier, which is the Supreme, and I'm kind of covering my face right now for people who are on YouTube. And this is uh, all of the privileges of the first two. This is at $49.99 a month. And you also can do a one-on-one -on -one Skype or Zoom conversation with me, taking me through some of the difficulties on your board, trying to troubleshoot some stuff, needing some in-person advice. Again, these are just options. You know, They're just like t-shirts. You try them on if they work. Great, if they don't, just put it back on the shelf. And the other thing I should mention is I don't want money to be the reason that you don't feel like you can get your best possible tone. So if $4.99 a month is too expensive for you given your circumstances at this time, we will grant you a free account. You just need to email us info at vertexeffects.com and we grant 100% of those free accounts. So uh, if you are interested, Go ahead and do that, and then when your circumstances change financially, just let us know, and you can become a supporting member at that time. Again, no means testing requires. We will grant you one if you just email us and request a free account. So that will give you the $4.99 privileges at no charge. So that's that. The other thing I wanted to let you know about is we have a podcast, and this is the Rig Doctor podcast. This is uh, the one that's on... Uh, Apple, it's on all the uh, streaming sites. We also have uh, one on uh, Spotify and all of the all the common places that you would find 
this sort of stuff. So I just want to let people know that it is there. If you're interested, we did some really cool interviews with Steen Skrydstrup, who's kind of like the grandfather of the European rig builders and Paul Lenders, who kind of came right after him. Two amazing guys. Uh, we're going to be doing Dave Friedman later this week. Uh, I'm trying to get uh, Pete Cornish <laughs> to, to come on live, although it's disputed whether he'll do it live or whether he'll read prepared answers. We're still trying to figure that out. But I'm really trying to get the gamut of, of all the rig builders and, and, and get them interviewed. So there's some really good stuff there. And then there's also just some tone tutorial stuff. So definitely check that out if you haven't. Again, it's the Rig Doctor podcast it's on iTunes. It's on Spotify. It's on YouTube. It's everywhere. Anywhere you can get a podcast, you can find ours, the Rig Doctor podcast. I just released a new one today. So let's uh, get into some of this stuff. A lot of you guys have been asking about this for a long time. I just got our first full round of uh, new pedal boards in today. These are extremely cool. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to show you some of the sizes. This stuff is all pretty standardized. I'm trying to see if I have a, a link to all of the, the pedal board sizes. Let me see if I can just bring one up for you so people kind of know that I'm not just, uh, I'm not just talking gibberish here. So I have something to to reference while you're looking at these different sizes and I'll kind of take you through some of this stuff. All right, here we go. I'm just gonna screenshot out of a email that I have right here. All right, awesome. <laughs> it's funny that I just screenshot it, but it, it screenshotted all of like the comments that are happening on the page. It, it, I guess it doesn't uh, differentiate when there's other stuff on the screen. Let me try one more time. All right. Perfect. All right, let me pull this up on the screen so you can see it. And I'm going to make it a little bit smaller so that uh, you can kind of see it. I'll do my best to, if it's really illegible, then let me know. So what I've got over here is the basic sizes. So these are the, the sizes that will be coming in. Uh, this is the smallest size right here. This is the, the uh, 10 by 17, and this is a full size riser. I'll kind of pivot here so the folks on uh, Instagram and Facebook can see. So this is the basic smallest size. And I think that we're going to call this the, the kind of the, the small size pedal board or the, 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 the most travelable version. Now, I'm just showing it right now with just one version of the lift. I'll make this a little bit smaller temporarily. Um, this is just one version of the lift. This goes the entire width of the board, but there'll be two different versions where it cuts in the lift. So the lift will have a cutout so you can have a volume pedal or an expression pedal uh, that comes with this. So you have two different sizes on this particular one. One that goes the full width and then one that has a cutout if you have a longer wall volume or expression pedal. The height of all of the risers is standardized. It's three inches of clearance with this hinge. Underneath, it's actually three and a half, but because of the flange here, you lose a half inch. And right now I have this bolted so that there's three screws, but if you were to remove these screws, and we'll have some thumb screw alternatives if you don't want to keep it locked down, and you actually don't need to keep it locked down at all. It's pretty rigid. You would just pull it up, and you'd have your pedals available underneath. We also include the third leg in the middle, but it's not going to be something that you need to do, but we have a bunch of different options of where you can mount it. So if you can see, let's see from the back here, I want to get the light kind of coming through. You can see there's a bunch of different screw holes here, and it's so you can actually move that third leg wherever you need it to be. Most people are not going to need this. I remove it on most of our boards. The reason why is that most of the time when you're using these risers, you don't have any need to use this because this is just holding stuff that's controlled by your MIDI controller, your programmer. So the need to go up here is not that useful. And most of the time, even with stuff on there stepping on it, it's not going to be a problem unless you have the really wide version of this pedal board. So this is the smallest size. We have this one and one other size riser, which I'll pull up again. So this one is the one that's 5.6 by 17 by 3.5. So that's the full width of the, uh, of the pedal board. And there's another one that's 12 inches. So it's cut in enough to fit most standard size volume pedals and wads. Um, so that's the first version. I got another version that's the next size up from there. 
And this one is, let's see, two. This is 11 by 20. So this is 11 by 20. This is the next size that will be available. Again, everything is the same in terms of, you know, the construction of the pedal board. Uh, bottom, all the feet uh, have their own uh, standoffs and mounts are welded into the board. Lots of different uh, ways that you can arrange the center configuration. This is actually a better view. So you can see if you want to con continue to keep that center leg, you can rearrange it in a lot of different positions. This one also has two different sizes. This one, which is the full width riser. And then there's one that also has a cutout. And let's see, I can't remember what size we designated for that. That one is, uh, there's going to be another one that's 15. So about five inches narrower than this one that you'll be able to fit, you know, wah pedal or uh, volume pedal, expression pedal, something like that on this one. This is what I built my uh, Mayer uh, Stevie Ray type rig on. I'll show you that one so you can kind of visualize what that looks like in, in a built pedal board fashion. So here is the 11 by 20 built. So quite a bit of stuff fits on there. This whole rig weighs 18 pounds. So the, the pedal boards are super light. This one, I took the riser off because I didn't need it. I mean, I'm doing all the controlling from the HX effects, but this is what an 11 by 21 would look like assembled. Next size up is this guy. So this one is 14 by 26. So this is one we're kind of calling the, the, uh, the tour size. Again, all these, every single one of the boards will fit into one of the Pelican air cases rated for ATA. So most likely, unless you had the heaviest pedals in the world, this will still be under the 55 pound limit, even at the largest uh, size pedal board. So this one again has three legs. This one you may need to use the third leg if you're getting a lot of action on that tier. Again, on most of the rigs, I remove it if I have a programmable switcher. But I just wanted to let you know that. And again, on the bottom, we have holes drilled for all different sorts of patterns. If you want to move that center leg, you can move it to the left or right pretty far degree. If you still want to have the rigidity of it and it's not fitting in the exact place that you need, you have lots of different options. You don't actually need to secure it so much from the top. Only on the bottom, there's two screws. It's just to give it some, some rigidity when you have some force coming down on it. And this one will have three different size risers on. So if you check this out, You'll have, this is number three now, you'll have this size, which is the full, the 26 inch width, and then you'll have another one that's a 21, so that could go volume pedal, expression pedal, wah pedal, and then there's one that's a 17 and a half, which could fit two wahs or expression pedals or volume pedals or one of each. So you could have a wah and expression pedal on this one, have a cut in for it, it would still fit all of your programmable switchers and stuff like that, and it's designed to fit every style of programmable switcher that, that's out there conceivably you know so I, I listed below the compatibilities gig rig rjm boss es5 the electro harmonic switchers all the voodoo labs uh the pbc6 the es5 all that stuff so it will fit pretty much anyone that's out there as far as the size is concerned and then this is the big one the daddy of all of the pedal boards let me move this a little bit So the granddaddy, this one is huge. This one is 29 by 15. And if you looked at uh, Danny Rabin's rig uh, from Marbin, where we did that out at Bestronics, this is the one that we used there. So this is a full size riser. We didn't use that on his. We actually used one that had a, a cut in because he had a, a Y and a volume pedal. So let's look at those sizes. There's two different sizes or three different sizes. So you'll have this full size one, which you've seen. And then we'll have another one that cuts in about four and a half inches for a volume pedal, and then one that cuts in about eight inches, so you have a volume and a wah, or two volumes, or volume and expression. So you have all these different options as far as the pedal boards are concerned. Or you could get them without a riser at all. If you just want the pedal board and you want to do your own thing, you don't need to get a riser. You, we'll sell them also just as blanks. So I'll show you an example of that. This is one that I'm going to be giving away today. Here's an example of one of just the, the straight up pedal boards. It just doesn't have anything on it at all. So you can get it this way as well. It's still going to have the holes drilled so that you could add a riser uh, in, the, in the meantime. Or if you decided later on that you needed to have a riser, you could add those. But this is how it will come. And I mean, this way, this is like feather, feather weight. It weighs nothing. It's incredibly light comparatively to 
the style pedal boards that uh, most of us would use for a flat rig. So in terms of pricing, we're trying to figure out all the different options. So I don't want to speak preemptively about how much it is that they're going to be. Uh, we're trying to figure out all the case options. Our idea is, is that we will provide the option for it to come with its Pelican Air case mate, which is, I think, the best, lightest weight pedal board that you can get, um, or pedal board case that you can get. So the idea here is that we don't have the big monster sizes. These are all sizes that can be traveled. These are all sizes that presumably assembled can be under the weight limit so that you can take this on any airline and be able to take it anywhere in the world because if you got a huge rig unless it's in a studio and you can't move it anywhere what's the point you know so the idea is is that we weren't going crazy big sizes the smallest size was based on the smallest size pelican skb style case you could get so as soon as we figured out exactly what our cost is going to be for the cases we'll give you all the options. So you can buy the pedal board platform by itself. You can buy it with a riser of your choosing. Each one of them has at least two to three different alternatives for risers or no riser. And you can choose whether you want it to come with a case or not. So you can get it a couple of different ways depending on what your needs are. Of course, you could always go and get a gig bag. I'm gonna also talk to Reunion Blues and some of the other um, soft case manufacturers and see if we can also work a deal with them so that we can include soft cases if people desire that. But I'm also curious about your feedback, about things that you would like to see. As far as manufacturing a custom soft case, it's, it's, it's not realistic for us to do that. The cost of it would, would be more than the pedal board itself. So we're not going to do that, but we will uh, look into the uh, Pelican alternatives. And uh, that's kind of the purpose. Everything that I'm building is pretty much going in those cases. So again, one more look at what it is that we're doing. We got the small board, which is 10 by 17. You have two different riser size options. The second size up is 11 by 20. That's still carry on, by the way. So one and two can both be carried on. Uh, and that one is 11 by 20. And then you have two different size risers there. The next size up is 14 by 26. You'll have three size risers that you could use for that one. So you have a volume expression or both, or a volume pedal or a wall. And then you have the tour size, the largest was is 15 by 29. And uh, you have three different riser sizes for that. Again, all of these can fit the various types of, uh, of switchers. This, the first two will not do the PVC 10 or the gig rig or some of the larger ones, but they'll do all the smaller ones. And then the, the top two, the three and four can handle any one of these. Um, so I'll have pictures and all that stuff on the website and show the compatibility with each switcher. Uh, and and also show you some photos so you can see about how many pedals can fit on there and power supplies and, and all that good stuff. So uh, I've done enough talking. I'm almost 20 minutes in. I'm going to take a breath and uh, read some of these comments and questions and kind of see uh, what you guys are thinking. And uh, we're going to do some giveaway stuff just so you know. Giveaway-wise, I'm going to be giving away this board, which is uh, one of the uh, – I think this one – this one no, this one's bigger. This is the 20, I don't want to misquote it here. This is the 14 by 26. So I'm going to be giving away a 14 by 26. I will give you the riser of your choosing. So you get this one and then I'll pull a riser of your choosing. This will be one of the things that we're going to be giving away today. I also am going to be giving away this pedal board, which is uh, one of our older style pedal boards, but still a you know, fantastic pedal board, nothing wrong with it. ABS on the bottom, for Mike on the top. I'm gonna to be giving away this one. This is about the same size as that. Um, let's see. I also have a couple of different hinged risers. This one is more a, a, for a fixed application. So if you have a, you're, you know, you want this to be fixed, kind of like how Rhett Scholl's board is, is the same style as that. I have one of these I'm gonna be giving away. Let's see, I got two more. I have this guy right here, which is another one that was in that Rhett Scholl style, kind of more of a fixed version kind. It can hinge, but it's not quite the same as the newer ones that we're doing. But that will be free for you if you're not planning on opening stuff up a lot. And then I do have one of just the regular hinge boards or hinge style uh, risers. So we have those to give away. And I also have a couple of other stuff that I've boxed up that some people won last time and then they never claimed it. 
And so we try to reach out to them. We could never get a hold of them. So I have a couple of different things here from one of our last giveaways. I have a uh, Diodario tuner. I know that you can't see it, but it is a brand new Diodario True Bypass tuner that's already packaged and ready to go. Again, this is available to anybody in the world. I will ship it to you. Um, I have a, a set of uh, True Tone power cables, a whole suite of power cables, like 12 or 15 power cables in there, new DC power cables. I have a, a Chox AC rider power supply, AC and DC power supply with a uh, you know, switchable transformer between uh, 120 and 220. And I also have a, another batch of DC power cables from True Tone, just like a replacement kit that gives you like 15 assorted lengths and sizes. So I have lots of stuff to give away today. I'll be asking some questions, some tech questions, and uh, you're welcome to uh, try to answer that. The first person that answers these technical questions correctly will be the winner of each of these prizes. We've got a lot of prizes, so there'll be lots to give away today. So uh, let's go and uh, see what folks are asking about. If you're on Instagram or you're on Facebook, wherever you are, I invite you to join us on the YouTube side for this because some of the stuff, the questions I'm going to bring up are going to be coming from this place on YouTube. And so I'm just trying to do the best I can to involve you. There's a link on Facebook is the very first comment I wrote that shows where to find us on YouTube. If you're on Instagram, you can check our stories and find us here and come and join us on the YouTube channel. All right, man, we got a good, we got a good group of people today. Excellent. All right. All right. I'm just kind of scrolling through the first group of uh, stuff we got. All right. This is from O'Reilly Tech. I'm just going to increase the uh, size here a little bit. Thanks for the effects loop interface, Mason. Uh, I tried to make one myself. If I didn't, I was going to try to make one myself. I didn't win it. Now I just have to put the uh, effects loop into my tweed. Yeah, or you could get one of those uh, boxes that does it for you. I think that uh, there are some of those, like uh, the tube amp is, expander has an effects loop. So if you didn't want to mod, if it's a vintage tweed amp, you could, you could always go that route, which is cool. Um, let's see. This is from Instagram. Uh, are there any options that don't have the Strymon bridge? Yeah, so we, we talked about one of the giveaway ones. I just like covered it with a bunch of uh, <laughs> with a bunch of risers. Uh, so you can get it without any any riser at all. You can get it just like this in any of the sizes that we made. It's just going to have these holes in it because it's going to be you know compatible with the ones that do have risers. But this does not affect. The structural integrity whatsoever it's just a matter of you know you're going to have pedals all over this presumably so you're not going to you're not going to see any of these holes but they will still be there because we do route them out all in the same fashion just like i did on this board like this board had the same holes of course i just put my pedals right over it you would never know there's any holes in there especially how full i have uh, this pedal board so same same type of thing uh, there was a super chat, by the way. I'm so sorry to the super chat person. <laughs> um, unless, uh, oh, here it is. Sorry for that. Uh, does the Big Daddy one fit in any, uh, fits in the Pelican Air case? It does. So actually, I think I wrote it on there. Which one? No, that wasn't the one I wanted. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so the big one, if you can, I'm going to blow it up big here, okay? Um, that under number four, which is the largest one, it's designed for a Pelican 1615 air case. So that's what it would fit under, is the 1615 air case. Thank you for that super chat. Very kind of you. Um, all right, let's go back. We were, we were talking about Instagram. There's an Instagram question. Instagram, Instagram. We're way back. All right, here it is. Very cool thing you're doing for the community. Well, I appreciate that. I don't know that this one is quite as communal and that we'll be selling this product, but overall I tried to, you know, do 10 for you and one for me. 
or 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 a, a better ratio of times that we're giving away free stuff than we're trying to come to market with stuff. But thank you. Um, ready for those boards? Thanks, Jeff. Uh, from Instagram, this is uh, Tequila Brando asked, "Pedal Power Three Plus worth the wait or go with the DC7?" They're both they're both uh, I'm sure going to be I'm sure the Pedal Power Three and Three Plus will be excellent supplies. There's uh, switch mode supplies like the Chalks DC7 is. Uh, I'm sure that they're both going to be great. Uh, if you need a power supply now, I don't think that you'll be remiss uh, if you got the Chalks DC7. That's an excellent power supply. I'm also sure that the Voodoo Lab one will be great. So if you need to build something right now, I don't think you're going to buy the DC7 and be like, oh man, I, I, it's going to be so much quieter if only I got the the, the Pedal Power 3, that's not the case. And if you're not familiar with what the Pedal Power 3 is, it's the new power supply, the first, well, I guess it's not really the first, but it's the first larger switching uh, or switch mode supply that Voodoo Lab has come out with. Uh, this is a big improvement, in my opinion, over what it is that they've, they've put out. They've, of course, established the standard in our industry for um, isolated power supplies, but they've also been the latest to, uh, to come over to uh, this style of power supply. So I'm glad that they're, they're making the leap and uh, I hope that it, it sells really well for them. Total Evo 7, quick question regarding GOMC boards, one I have right back there. Is it true that whenever you pick a board size, the black part is one inch less on every side? Uh, well, I think it's, you're talking about the extrusion. Uh, let's. So when I when you pick a board size, it's going to be the the dimensions of the board from edge to edge. Now the extrusion that goes around it, which is this aluminum border, that's about three quarters of an inch. So you're going to lose no, it's like a half an inch. You're going to lose about a half an inch on every side. So left to right, you're going to lose an inch. Top to bottom, you're going to lose an inch. You could dress the pedals or mount them over this. But typically, people leave that edge alone because, or untampered, because if they were to hit it with something, their pedal wouldn't be receiving the impact. It would be the, the board itself. Um, so that's, that's typically what, uh, what, I, what I would presume uh, when, I'm, when I'm measuring out the size of a board. Um, Pete Hickston, yeah. I, I hope you're talking about the power supply, or, or sorry, the uh, not the power supply. You're talking about the podcast. I'm mixing up my my peas. Um, this is from Instagram. What cases uh, fit or come with the board? Like we talked about before, it's going to be the Pelican Air cases. Again, over here, the the smallest one, number one, is the 10 by 17. That will be a Pelican uh, 1485 air case that that's designed for. The uh, travel size 11 by 20 will be uh, Pelican 1535 air case. The third size up is uh, the 14 by 26. That's designed for a 1605 air case. And then the largest size, the 15 by 29, is designed for a Pelican 1615. So there are several different sizes that you can, that you can get for this one. Uh, also from Instagram, this is Zach Hobbs Music, International Shipping, yes. So all of our dealers will have uh, these, these, uh, these, these pedal boards. Uh, I mean, or at least the ones that want them. And so there won't be any, uh, any issue with getting them internationally. And if there's a country that does not have a dealership, we will, of course, ship you the, the device or the, uh, the pedal board to that location, just like our pedals. No difference there. Um, <clears throat> all right. You want one now, Bruce? Take my money. Trevor, thanks for that. Sean, <laughs> Gabby, thank you. Uh, Edwin and Clay, thanks, guys. Okay, another one from Instagram. Instagram's been pretty good today, so I guess Mason Mejia is importing. If you're over on uh, Facebook, I invite you to join us over on uh, YouTube here. All right, from IG, is it okay to split power between a tuner and an overdrive? Well, it depends. So what he's talking about... Let's see if I have a tuner that has a split out or something that has a split power. I don't know if I do. I'm trying to look at something that I know that has two. No, I don't think I have anything on the shelf here. Uh, so basically what he's talking about 
is if you have something like, say, I'm just going to pull up a picture here of, let's yeah, say, a, a boss uh, So tuner. basically what he's talking I'm just going to look up a boss tuner here, get an image for us that we can see from the back. Because I want to make this clear to somebody who maybe doesn't understand exactly what it is that I'm talking about. All right, here's a good picture. Here's a boss tuner from the back. All right. And I'll pull it up on here. All right. So here's a boss tuner. It's a little bit blurry. Sorry about that. It's the first one I found. So you can see that there's two out, or there's one input and there's one output. Really, these are, I believe that they're throughs, but actually, you know what? That might not be true. They might put some filtering on the output side because they know it's going to be going to another pedal. So there are people that can use them effectively and not have an issue. It is, though, a, a paralleling, you know, or like a daisy chain, but you're doing it off the boss pedal instead. Uh, this is kind of the most simplistic way I can explain it. And so there are going to be some pedals that aren't going to have any problem with sharing. Just like if you were to, to parallel off of one output off your power supply, there's going to be some pedals that don't care about that. They're going to be totally fine. They're not going to have an issue. The, the main litmus test that you can kind of use is, is, is if it's an analog pedal, you're probably going to have less probability of an issue. And if it's a low current draw, so like an analog overdrive or an analog distortion pedal, those are going to be good fits for this sort of thing, typically, if you have to do it. But if you can avoid it, I would, of course, say go isolated if possible. If you can't, you know, then, then this is a condition. Sometimes I, I've done it with just a single thing, uh, like a single unit that I'm powering off, like an overdrive, and or sometimes um, a boost or something that has a really low current analog. That typically is okay, and you can test it. If it, if it sounds noisier, then if you go directly into your isolated supply, then you know you have a problem. Or you can compare it against a battery. That's going to be the quietest power supply. Uh, presuming that it takes a battery. I hope that uh, answers the question. Uh, all right. Preet Parna, uh, do you custom build the new boards? I don't make them myself. No. So our metal manufacturer that makes all of our uh, Vertex pedals, I'm trying to see if I have one on the shelf. Oh, here's one. Uh, that makes all of our enclosures for our devices they make the uh, pedal boards and they also have a subsidiary of their company called Fix Pedal Boards which are making the risers and all that stuff that you see now. In fact, they actually have a discount going on right now that anybody who, this is gonna, I was going to put this on our Patreon but I'll make it available to everybody and I'll add it to our Patreon as well, uh, is if you use the code VERTEX20, all one word, and you go to the Fix Pedal Board website, um, let me... Uh, We'll just pull up their website right now and I'll show you. Let me uh, let me share my screen here. All right. So if you go to the Fix Pedal Board website, which is here, they're offering 20% off all of the accessories that they have. So these would be like pedal risers like this. This would be um, any of their, um, their Strymon bridge style things. So you can actually go on right now and if you use the code VERTEX20, all one word, I'm going to type it even in, the, uh, in the, the chat box right now and I'll have Mejia posted in Instagram and on Facebook. If you use Vertex 20 at checkout, you get 20% off anything that you order through their site, which is pretty cool stuff. So these are not going to be the hinge style bridges, but these are going to be the uh, the ones that uh, the one that uh, you know that they would use up up until uh, up until we're coming out with these. They're also going to be doing custom one-off versions of the ones that I'm doing. And they won't be, they won't have our Vertex branding on them, but we'll still, we still get a, a commission through them for those sales. So you can still support us, even if, you know, one of those, the, the baseline uh, kind of prefab pedal boards don't work for you, or our riser sizes don't work for you, you can pay them to build a custom one. It's just a lot more expensive. You know, we're trying to keep our riser cost about the same as what uh, they currently are through fixed pedal boards. And so, you know, if you went to build a custom one, it might be double that price, but uh, they'll still do it for you and they'll still do it for you in this fashion. But this is just sort of proprietary to Vertex, this style hinge system through their site. So I hope that, uh, I hope that answered your question. I think that answered your question. 
Uh, let's go to uh, let's go to the next one. I think I lost my place here a little bit. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, that was all right. Cool. Philip B, what's up? Uh, Jeff, glad you listed the Pelican cases. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm glad you saw that. Um, Sean, really appreciate you. Uh, have the dimensions of popular switches? Yeah. So I mean, we're, we'll we'll correlate on each board. Like it'll fit these switchers on it, so people know which ones they'll work. Now it's based on the pedal board size, not the riser size. The riser side will, size will will fit a lot more than than uh, than what we'll list. We're just kind of concerned about the depth uh, is the main factor there. So we'll list that. Uh, Saint Pope, my good buddy, and it comes in your favorite color, chartreuse. I know. Um, Philip, not, I don't know. I don't know what that was not for. Uh, convene said it's finest. Yes. So we'll, we'll have prices soon. I just don't want to misquote because you know, the fixed pedal boards is actually doing all the manufacturing. They're going to be doing all the shipping and stuff like that. So we're coordinating with them on the, on the, the pricing because they're going to be the ones that are uh, collecting the materials and all that stuff. So I don't want to misquote and then put them in a weird position where we have to backtrack. So I will tell you as soon as we know, again, Kevin, I will tell you as soon as we know, and Trevor, I will tell you as soon as we know the prices, I will let you know. Uh, can you explain or compare the choices of this versus the Friedman boards? Well, the the Friedman boards, I think, come in a couple of different sizes. I don't really know much about the composition. I don't know if they do, if they have a, a hinge. I know that they're angled. And that's just not something that I, I like to do for the style that I build on our channel. I build with a flat board and then I use a uh, hinged riser so that you can pull it up or I do a completely flat surface like I did for Red Shoulder that doesn't hinge, which just have like fixed items underneath. Um, and so this is just sort of an adaptation of the things that I've been doing for a long time and uh, now have a product that will allow people to use this and build it themselves and use our videos as a tutorial to kind of help them do that. And the cool thing about our videos and this product is I'm building pedal boards with this every every month and I'm showing exactly how to do this implementation. The thing that I find that's difficult about a lot of the pedal board companies is they're not coming out with videos every week or doing live streams every week and explaining the different ways that you can actually optimize and utilize their pedal boards beyond just the initial launch of a product. This is something that I view as being a long-term thing that we're using weekly. We're giving tutorials in real time to people just like we're doing right here talking about the rigs how to best assemble them, how to optimize the hinge risers, where to put that extra third leg if you need it. A lot of times the support level in terms of multimedia, in terms of the, the social media, not just showing how cool your rig is, but actually showing functional stuff, that's one advantage that you'll have with this, is I'm gonna give you presumably over the next year a hundred different ways that you could use these pedal boards in different contexts. And I don't know any other pedal board company that does that because most of the guys that are building the, the pedal boards they're mechanical guys. They're not really on the electrical side. They're not necessarily, some of them aren't even really mechanical guys. They just have a good idea and they found somebody that could do it for them. I'm certainly not a mechanical expert to the degree that our metal manufacturers are, but I've also have, you know, over 10 years of experience building rigs like this in trying to figure out what worked about pedal boards and what doesn't and being able to get, get something that, that meets the, the, the type of pedal boards I like to build and, I, and the pedal boards that I show you guys how to build. Um, so uh, hopefully that's a, a good a good uh, explanation. I think Friedman stuff is fine. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. In fact, I think that uh, that the, the 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 guy that designed the the metal on the two of our boards is the same person. Um, so I think it's just different ways to to skin a cat, as they say. Um, any spaced amount of uh, power supply underneath? No, and that's deliberate. The, and, and we'll talk more about that in the building process, but most people, sh they should not have their power supplies underneath. I know that it seems like a cool idea to save space, but most of you are using linear power supplies and to put those underneath pedals is a problem and is a noise maker. And now you might say, oh, my pedal board's not that noisy or I don't notice the noise. Uh, there could be conditions where maybe you wouldn't notice it. Really clean amps, not a lot of gain, stuff like that. Um, but linear power supplies are problematic uh, especially when they're underneath pedals. And uh, I, I think that also from a troubleshooting aspect, having to go both sides of your rig in order to figure that out, I've never found that to be advantageous. And uh, I've troubleshot a lot of boards and I've put a lot of power supplies on pedal boards. Uh, it has to be in the thousands at this point in terms of rigs that I've worked on, maybe not rigs that I've built. 
but uh, that's that's a reason why I don't do that. Most of the guys that design those sort of you know angle platforms like the pedal trains, they weren't thinking about how this would cause a problem by having a toroid or C-core uh, transformer that was directly beneath a uh, digital delay or something that would have uh, that would become sensitive to the magnetic field. Uh, and one thing that you need to realize too is the more you max out your power supply on a linear power supply, let's say you have 2,000 available milliamps in your power supply, the closer you run that power supply to its max, the more intense the magnetic field becomes. And if you have a device that's sensitive to that, to an electromagnetic field, you all of a sudden have a much noisier system than you would if you were say only running it at one you know one one amp of the 1000 or the 2000 milliamp total so this is a consideration that i think a lot of people that are putting their boards on pedal trains not to say that pedal train is problematic in and of itself i, I think that people just need to be aware if you're using a linear power supply underneath a pedal board like that and you're putting pedals on top of it which almost everybody is you're inviting a noise issue in many cases and in many environments. And so I don't do that for that reason. Uh, is there a case box or gig bag? We talked about it a little bit uh, earlier. Yeah, the, I, I mentioned all the different types that will be available, all Pelican related stuff. And they'll be expensive, but they'll be bulletproof. It's a great insurance policy. You know, it's the cheapest insurance policy you can get for your pedal board. Um, Jack Curtis, I'm so glad that you finally have pedal boards. I'm excited to get one of these extremely convenient that you design these to fit in the Pelican cases. I think it's the way to go. It's the wave of the future. Uh, Dustin, uh, yeah, it goes under the riser. That's right. Uh, thanks, Sean. Thank you. We talked a little bit. Already have a third leg. <laughs> a little innuendo there from Rockstar. Uh, Ryan Lopez, uh, which one of the sizes would compare to the Pedal Train Classic? I don't know their, their size designation, so I couldn't say, but I list all of the dimensions a little earlier here, and they'll be uh, also on our website, so you can compare them there based on that. Um, I'm not going to have any carrying cases that are soft cases. I'm going to try to get with Reunion Blues and see what they say. Uh, also, I've talked with uh, another uh, case company that already makes these that would have compatible sizes. Mm -hmm. Um, but typically this is really sort of being thought of for the professional side of things and, and, uh, and so that's kind of where I am with it. Um, you know, if that's something that turns out to be a bad decision on my part and that people are not buying them because they want a soft pedal board case, then we may have to come up with some alternative. But at this point, uh, there's people that do that really well between Reunion Blues and a few others that make soft versions. So those would be the alternatives to the Pelican cases. Um, Matt, I'm so glad you dig it. Uh, Ari will have those prices to you soon. Uh, thank you again, Sean. Glad to hear it, and I thank you for chiming in. Sean again, let's see. So we get some more questions. I'm a little behind. Um, Grant, could you use the wah pedal even if the board has a riser? Yeah, so we talked about how there'll be different sizes. So there'll be, for the larger ones, there'll be two different size that, sizes that, you, that it will cut in from the width of the riser. One that's for just a wall, and then some that can do wah and volume pedal, or two wahs, or two volume pedals, or a volume and an expression. Any combination of sort of two uh, mechanically operated foot pedals like that. So you'll have options for those uh, on all of the boards. Some of them will have multiple options. Some of them will just have two. Um, I guess that really sounds like some. Some will have three different options. Some will have two different options. That's the mo more succinct version. Um, let's see. I will know the prices hopefully within the next week. Uh, I hope to have them for sale in the next week. Uh, or sorry, in the next month, the end of the month. <laughs> Hey, Paul, um, soft cases would be good. Okay, well, so this is something that we'll, we'll have to talk about more. Like, if, if it's, I don't think that it would be realistic that we create a vertex version because, you know, the ones that come with most of the power or, so, or the pedal boards, are, they're kind of cheap and they come apart. And I just wouldn't want to do that just to say I had one. So if there was really a, a huge contingency of people that needed soft uh, gig, gig bags, we have to figure out something else. Again, I think right now Reunion Blues and, and those guys would be the type of people I'd point you to for soft case. Um, we talked about this a little earlier, Dustin, so you can check back on that. Um, 
I know a lot of people are in your situation uh, as far as uh, having a lot of gigs canceled, you know, and uh, I, I think that it's, it's, it's totally a real thing. And, uh, you know, for some of those artists, they they work with brands like ours and, and as endorses and things like that and sometimes a way to save you a little bit of money off the the sticker price for artists but i know every company has kind of their own version of how they treat uh prospective artists so you you know for us you can always email us and we can we can talk to you talk to you about our, our requirements um and any sort of quid pro quo that would need to happen in order for for us to work together but we're going to try to make these as affordable as we can. And, and that's really the goal is not to, to gouge anybody, is to really cut it as close to the line as possible. And understanding that we're also going to be giving, you know, 30% to dealers, you know, off of the sticker price or for distributors, it's even more than that. So, you know, there's, there's considerations there as well that, you know, we, we also just can't give it away for nothing either. We're going to do the very best we can to keep the, the margin as, as uh, minimal as we can. Um... There are not going to be handles, but there's about an inch clearance on the bottom, and there's like wraparounds. It's very easy to travel or you know to to pick up from the edge. So there's like a there's a wrap. I don't know how well you can see it with this lighting around here. So there's a gap between here that you can you can physically pull up, and you can see that the feet are about an inch from the bottom and about two inches from the actual top of the board. So this is a very easy system to pull it from it's not difficult to get it uh maneuver it anyway you have plenty of uh clearance there uh i love soft case for local gigs they usually have pockets super easy to throw stuff in well i hear you on the soft cases and this is again a consideration that we'll have to either consider alternatives or let people know what their equivalencies are if you want to get a case from a union blues our main uh, avenue right now is to go into the the pelican cases and of course those have foam and you can put compartments in there by, you know, uh, plucking out the foam accordingly to what your needs are. Um, yeah, I think we're talking again about the gig situation. Um, Pedal Train does a backpack. Yeah, I probably won't do that. <laughs> um, oh, I don't think it'll be 400 bucks for the board. No, I, I think it'll be in the $100 range. Um you know, we're going to try to again keep it as close to the the you know as close of a margin as we can. We, the idea is that we sell a lot of these, you know, and, and we want them to be accessible to everybody. Um, Peter, thank you. They all look great. Need that fourteen by twenty six? Uh, no, not in hot pink. All they're all going to be black at this point. Um, happy four twenty. Okay, oh, yeah, I guess that is today, huh? Uh, can I get a Paul Riser? I don't know. Maybe it's a joke I'm supposed to get, but I don't. Um, nice. Awesome risers. Thanks, guys. Uh, Eddie, we check all our boards on tour due to weight and size. We pay a ton to check them. If these are light enough in combo with the Opec and Aircase. Yeah, the idea is, is that even the biggest one would be under 55. So you would still make the, the cutoff with that. And that was why I didn't go any bigger than that. In the Pelican Air cases, that would still be the right uh, weight for travel, so you wouldn't get overweight on those. And the first two of the four are carry-on size, so you can take those. They fit all the requirements for the ATA carry-on size, so you could bring them with you in the Pelican case on a flight. Um, I'm mainly interested in the risers. This is from John uh, with the swing back hinge. That's what all these are. Um, so you can buy them separately. I'll have let's see what was that i think it was 10 different sizes that will be available and then you can also get custom ones made uh from the manufacturer of ours that does them that will still give us a small commission for those sales but they're going to be about doubly as expensive as whatever we determine these are so you know these, these are going to be more expensive devices but I, i'm pretty sure that most people will be able to make these risers usable on their own pedal boards they will require a, a 10 30 second machine screw uh to mount through but they already have on the bottom they have uh, pen nuts that are already installed. So it has like pre-threaded, I don't know, can't really see it because of the flange, but there's pre-threaded pen nuts inside of these. So you won't need any sort of washer or, or um, nut. It's already built in and welded into the, the legs of the riser. Um, all right, we got some unclaimed prizes. Let's, let's get rid of those first. We're gonna get rid of the unclaimed prizes. So I'm gonna do it 
this is going to go for the first two people. I'm going to give, these are the kind of variety packs from uh, True Tone of their DC power cables. So these are all their you know, molded power cables in assorted lengths. I have two of kind of the 12 packs and it has all the adapters. The first question that I want to know, and these are the first two people that answer this correctly, are going to get these sent to them. These will go anywhere in the world. I'm in priority flat rate padded or priority flat rate small boxes. We're going to screenshot the winners. There were some discrepancies last time on winners because I think sometimes peop in people's own chat, their message will supersede where it shows up in our master. So we're going to have a screenshot of it and, uh, and we'll contact you. So you want to let us, you want to reach out to us and tell us that you actually won though when you when you get it, like when we tell you, hey, you're the winner. Because last time these people, they disappeared off the face of the earth and we couldn't find them to give them their prizes. So definitely email us, info at vertexeffects.com. The question that I have, first two people that answer this correctly will get it, is why do you not want to put a linear power supply, this would be something like a Voodoo Lab Pedal Power 2, underneath your digital pedals? What is the problem with that? Tell me what the problem is with that. First two people that answer that correctly, those two people are each going to get one of these DC power cable packs from True Tone. Go ahead and answer those questions. And I think we already have, some are coming in. I don't know how they're coming in on uh, Mason Mejia's side. He's monitoring this. So the first two people that answer that correctly will get these. Mason Mejia will determine who those people are, and then you can email us back at info at vertexeffects.com, and we will just need your, your, your mailing address and your email so we can let you know your tracking number and those sorts of things. I'll mail these out tomorrow. Um, let's see. So I think we should have some winners on that. I'll take a few more questions and we'll do the next one. Um, let's see. Let's see what we got. All right. Uh, what length would the riser have to be in order to fit a base whammy? Well, I think the ba I think the whammy is uh, the the largest one. I think is only like ten inches deep or something like that, or eleven inches. So I think. You'd need the, the last two sizes, the three and four sizes would fit that. You just need to get the one with the double cutout. Um, let's see, it would be, uh, so three or four would work. And then you would have to get either the hinge riser size two or three. Those would both, I think those would both work. Uh, actually, sorry, you'd need three on both these to fit the whammy. Because I think it's about seven or eight inches wide and like 10 or 11 deep if it's the larger size one. Uh, so yeah, you would need that. But on a lot of these, because uh, of the depth of it, you could fit some of the smaller expression pedals like the Dunlop ones and the Volume X will fit on uh, versions 3 and 4, even if you have the full-size riser on some of those. Um, so especially the mini ones would work for sure. So yeah, it would definitely work on these. Uh, Shoy, these boards look great. Wish I can win one of them. Well, we, we still have one to give away, so stay tuned. So many great giveaways. I know we got a lot of good stuff today. Uh, what about add-ons to make the pedal board stand on an angle? I don't do that. That I don't. I don't do the angle boards. You you, you should just go with a different manufacturer if that's what you're you're into. Um, <laughs> unclaimed cash and prizes. Yep. Very gracious. Well, we have a lot of stuff you know that we're always getting here, and some of these were are still totally functional, and I just don't use them. So I figured people might as well get them who are going to use them. Jason, glad you dig it. Uh, let's see. The way it looks, <laughs> looks. <laughs> Gabby Bergman. Uh, let's see. Prices, Marcelo. We said that uh, we'll we'll try to determine those by the end of the week as soon as we can. Uh, Dustin, we did talk about these compared to the Freeman board, so just listen back a little bit earlier. Wow, James Bond's here. Hello from Canada. Hey, I missed the start. Do they have cable runs? I don't know what that what cable runs are. Uh, maybe you mean like. Uh, I don't know if you can see this, but in the center leg there, let's see if you can see it. You see there, there's a hole in there. This is so you could do a cable run in here if you wanted. You could run cables through that and you can mount it anywhere you want. And this has got a, a rubber grommet around it so it doesn't put any uh, 
weirdness on stuff. Later on, although not right now, we're gonna actually make different versions of the side that'll have like IEC punch outs. So you can run your power out of there and also a buffer module. So it'll have all of our buffer, like, you know, it'll have like all the buffer options. So you get like a dual buffer, you get a tri buffer, if you have like an effects loop or a stereo system, or uh, you could do one that uh, that's for a wet dry system that has the right isolation transformers and splitting and all that stuff with the right specification buffers because almost nobody does that. Um, so it will be, we'll have those, those are going to be later on, probably at least six months from now, but there will be that option and it won't be that you have to get a new board or you have to get anything. It'll literally just retrofit onto where that leg was on, on, you can choose the side you want it to be on left or right side, which is cool. Um, Hey, yeah, Leo, Alex K, nice plants. Well, these are my wife's plants. She's decorated this office to resemble, uh, a jungle. But it is very, uh, it is very lush. So I appreciate that about it. It's a nice, nice office to come into. I just want the riser where you can just get a riser. Nobody's going to stop you. Uh, hello from the Canaries, the Canary Islands. Cool. Uh, hey Matt. Hey Jose. Uh, Solaris. Any way I can get a steel string MK2 as a giveaway? Uh, it's not an option today. Uh, stoke for the new boards. Thanks, Blue Oaks. Uh, what pedals would you normally put under the riser? So I would put like the analog drives, stuff like that that doesn't have like tap tempo or that you wouldn't have any need to get to, you know, like because the riser will lift up. Like right now, I just have it secured. But if you just took out these screws, this will just hinge up and down. In fact, on the boards that I've done with it, I usually just leave the screws out or I'll replace them with thumb screws. You'll get both options that come with it in, a, in just like a bag like an accessory bag so you can use some screws so you can unscrew it and, and screw it back in with your thumb so it's easy for you to take in and out i usually just leave them off because gravity and the way that it sits in a in a case and all that stuff all the weight's coming down on it so it's not going to be flipping open or, or be dancing around in your in your case so i usually don't even put them on at all but there'll be those options if you want to screw it in tight you can do it there power supply would go underneath there um and, you know, I'm going to talk about the types of power supplies I think are the right fit for this. Really, it's going to be switch mode power supplies that aren't going to have the sensitivity with magnetic, uh, with electromagnetic fields, uh, the same way that a linear supply would have. Um, so, yeah, analog stuff that doesn't have tap tempos. You don't need to access it for any reason. Uh, and power supplies is the type of stuff that I would put under there. That's going to be, and we'll, we'll show a lot of this, these examples in uh, our rig builds and stuff like that, really uh, exemplifying what these do. Uh, yes, the rig doctor is big on foliage. Mason Mejia put that in there for us. Uh, Patrick Bryant, yes it is. I'm excited too. Um, Jeff, what would you prefer to use if and when you build a cable loom, like for a cable method? I've been using TechFlex, but I don't wear, know where there's better alternatives. I think that that's what most people use as a standard. They'll use TechFlex and then they'll use um, some uh, really thick heat shrink and kind of have that go over the TechFlex where the openings are, you know, maybe like four or six inches on either side of it where the breakout is. So I, I think that that's pretty standard. And there's, there's different sizes and thicknesses of tech, tech flex. So you can get that. That's like a sleeving for those of you who aren't familiar. It's like a nylon sleeving that goes over bundles of cables. I wouldn't put your AC though in there. Uh, some people do that and I, I disagree with that practice, but some people do. Um, look super, yeah, they are incredibly light. I mean, the, the, the weight difference between the metal version and the wood version of the same or the composite version of the same, it's less than half. Um, you know, and, and when you, you're getting close to that 55 pound limit, it really can make the difference, you know, where you don't have to like take stuff and put it in your backpack, you know, so that you can make sure that you can travel with it. Um, there is sometimes a dog, my, my dog Zeke, although he's out in the other uh, room with my wife, who's also <laughs> on a Zoom conference call, so he's chilling out with her. Uh, Uncle Mason at Vertex FX, what's the new pedal board made of? Yeah, they're, they're uh, aluminum. They're aluminum and then they're treated with a, with a, a special type of paint, which, uh, which is super durable and uh, is, is not gonna cause noise issues that some of these pedal boards do. Um, so you definitely want to, uh, to check them out and, you know, again, we're going to have them all over the world. All of our dealers are, are really interested in these and, uh, for, for a professional context. And again, we're going to keep them as, as ex inexpensive as we can and, uh, and really try to pass as much of the savings on to you. The idea is, is to give you something good that you can build your rigs on and, and kind of be the scaffolding for the entire system. So that's, that's the intent here. 
Um, and they'll have a lifetime warranty, which is cool. They have a lifetime warranty on all this stuff, which is pretty, pretty dang cool. Um, all right, Jason, I'm doing an all-in-one board with a rig, an orange terror stamp as my rig. Are any of those board, any of those boards appropriate? Yeah, they would be good for this purpose. And uh, I think it would definitely be cool. We're going to share our, Inst our Instagram story went down, but we're going to fire it back up. Hold on just a second while I get our, our Instagram stuff going live. There we go. All right. Yeah, so this would be great for any of those purposes. Um, let's see. So your all-in-one is cool. Let's see. Killer size. Yeah, we got a couple different sizes. <laughs> John Lucas. Where is Zeke? Yeah, he's in the other room with my wife. He's kind of hanging out there. Uh, these boards uh, like no slope freedom board with the and if, uh Dustin, I think we talked about this before uh a little bit earlier so maybe this this question came came before that so just reference that when this goes live I'm powering HX effects with five other pedals they're all powered by a true tone CS6 and a Chox 4 expander after around a half hour every time the HX cuts out well uh how which how many outlets are you using to power it and are you powering it off the chalks or are you powering it off the HX uh, or sorry powering it off of the True Tone CS6 I've been running mine off the CS7 for three days <laughs> and I just unplugged it today to move it so I could show you uh, and I haven't had any issues so are you powering off the chalks and is it getting enough milliamps it really draws about 1200 when I've tested it and I think Paul at chalks somewhere around the same um, but you may need to, to parallel a few outputs in order to get enough current to it. So, um, let me know, let me know, uh, what you're powering off it. I can, I can tell you, cause there's a max that you have to stay with under on the CS6 as well. So I think the CS6 provides like 1.6 amps. So that's 1600 milliamps. So if you're maxing that out, uh, with this and that could also be the other problem is that maybe you're too close to the the, the limitations of the available current um, Would these fit in a mono case? Yeah, there's gonna be some that will definitely cross over and we'll, we'll we'll have to come up with a list of the Compatible ones for the site Brandon it's been a while since they updated the option from the pedal power 2 for sure. Yeah, I'm glad they do it True tone CS6 good one since these are flat boards Is there any problem putting my time factor on top of the DC 7 for example Hummer noise? Well the DC 7 to my knowledge, is a switch mode power supply. So on those type of supplies, there's not an issue. It's on the linear supplies that are a problem. The ones that have the toroid or C-core or R-core um, uh, transformers inside of them. Those are the ones where there's a problem. Nick, you're welcome. Preparna, you're welcome. Uh, Mr. Mikey V, will you be doing a power supply in the future, like a combo setup? I have no plans to do that. Uh, there's so many good power supply manufacturers. I don't know that I'd be bringing much to the table here that would be new or exciting, other than just it saying Vertex on it. Um, so I'm not that interested in it at this point, although I never say never, but there's so many great supplies out there now. But I think it's time for another giveaway. So I have, speaking of chocks, I have a Chox AC rider, has AC and DC. This one is a linear power supply, but Chox is a really cool thing where he puts these uh, steel caps over the, uh, the, the, the most sensitive areas where the magnetic field gets out. So it definitely mitigates it as much as it can be. I also have a, tu uh, a tuner from Diadario, their true bypass tuner. I have two different things. The first two people that answer this question correctly are going to win these things the first person to answer correctly and i don't know if this is going to cause people to stagger actually you know what we're not going to do that i'm just going to choose which one you're going to get and i'm not going to say it because i don't want this to affect your answers so one person's going to get the power supply one person's going to get the tuner i'm going to let mason mejia decide who that is because i'm not going to take the heat i'm just teasing Mejia. you can blame it on me um so the question that i have for you and this is going to go back to some of our other videos. So this is gonna be something you have to have kind of been paying attention a little bit to get this. I wanna know why is it important that you have an input and an output buffer on your system? Not just one buffer in front. Why do you wanna have an input and an output buffer on your system? Why is it important to have a buffer on both ends? Hopefully it's a high quality buffer, but why do you need one on both ends? First two people to answer this correctly, 
get in touch with us. Mason Mejia will let you know who you are. You can email us at info at vertexeffects.com. So go ahead and answer that now. This is on our YouTube side. So if you're on Facebook or Instagram, please make sure you migrate and join us over, over on this side. So first two people there will get that. Um, Deep Zeb, love the channel. Thank you. Uh, I thought the riser was going to be hinged. All the risers are hinged. They're all hinged. There's the hinge right there. And it'll pivot up. I just have them locked in place right now because I'm just carrying them out from the garage. And I don't want to be chasing them all around because there's no there's no pedals or anything on them right now. Um, so they can be a little a little floppy. So they're all hinged, every single one. Except some of the ones I'm giving away today are not all hinged. Um, Jeff, I hadn't heard about the Pedal Power 3 yet adding to the cart. Now, yeah, it should be a good one. There's also some really good uh, switch mode power supplies that I think are equivalent. If, uh, oh, did I do a butt crack? Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, yeah, good thing I waxed. Uh, this is interactive idea is awesome. I'm glad you guys dig that. Uh, I'm doomed if I lose an inch. I don't know what that's in reference to. Uh, <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Anthony Cunningham, Mason, please, please, please ask pedal board soft case manufacturers to make soft cases with backpack straps and larger front pockets to hold cables. Well, I can ask, but actually I think it'd be better if you ask because typically the market doesn't listen to other manufacturers. They usually listen to the consumer. And so in this case, you're actually in a better position than me to encourage some of these people. I will, of course, uh, when we're looking for, for soft cases, at which it looks like is the request that many of you have, uh, I will I will certainly uh, ask that uh, of the uh, various manufacturers. Thank you, Brendan. Um, Jeff, do you ever build rack format rigs? Yeah, actually, I don't know if you can see it behind me. I'm building a, a, a wet, dry, wet rack for myself, but very few people ask for that anymore. I don't think I've built one in five years, except this one I'm going to build for myself, but it's just for the wet effect. So I'll build like dry pedal boards for myself, and then they'll all go into that rack for the uh, the wet uh, signal. But um, any advice for managing cables in the rack itself? Well, usually people will designate one side to run the audio down and the other side to run the power down, So that, especially because that's mostly AC in a rack. Uh, that kind of keeps them separated. Um, so I think you, doing that designation is good. I think another organizational tip is make all of your cables terminated on one end first so you'll do you know like 20 cables you know i don't know how many pedals you're switching 20 cables with straight plugs that are that are four feet long you know you just make them all the same length you plug them all in and you label them with blue painters tape what they are send one return one send two return two send three return three and you route them up to the pedals or whatever it needs to be going to you route them in the loom along the w one side of the of the rack. Again, you're designating one side of the rack for audio, the other side for the power, so that they're not crossing at all. And this is AC, so this is going to be important that they, those don't get near each other. Uh, and then you go into the the respective pedals or devices from there. That's that's the the, the way that I always did it. Um, air cases. Is he sending it? saying just the pedal board and saying that they're in a case of air. No, it's an actual type of molded case made by a company called Pelican. And, uh, you know, if you pay them extra, they'll deliver it just like the stork delivers a baby. Um, because Pelicans look a whole lot like storks, don't they? Will Sweetwater be a dealer? Yes, they will. Um, finally, a functional two-tier pedal board. Yes, sir. Um, Paul, yes, indeed. Can you explain the benefits? I feel like we've we talked about this, uh, Dustin. If I really haven't answered this at you know by the end of this thing, then bring it up again. But I'm pretty sure I answered this for you, uh, or a little bit earlier. Polytune two. What about it? It's cool. It's a good tuner. Uh, having a soft case option would be great. Okay, thank you for the feedback. Can't wait to try out the boards. Well, you know you'll be getting one, Brendan. <laughs> uh, Brendan works with us, so that's one of the one of the perks of being on the team Vertex. You get whatever you need. Is the switch popping just a function of true bypass circuit? And besides getting a switcher, is there a way to decrease it? Well, there's people that do switching in different ways. Uh, there's nothing inherent about, I mean, the, a butt contact mechanical foot switch like this is going to be more prone to, to popping than 
well, it, actually, no, it's not true. It is completely a design issue. And usually the reason why you're not hearing pops in the, uh, the momentary switch versions that activate a relay is that a lot of them are discharging the noise out of the audio path and then bringing it in. And that's why there's some latency on a lot of those when you hit the foot switch and then it takes a little bit for the pedal to actually engage. Even if the light comes on, the audio actually doesn't come on right away because they're discharging the pop out of the audio path, then bringing in the audio path. This is a design thing. If you are not sure, a lot of pedal builder, uh, pedal builders, and, and myself included, have various backgrounds in terms of what they learned, how much they understand circuits. And the popping thing, although the mechanical butt contact switches, switches like what you saw on, on all of our pedals, three pull double throw switches, those are... are more inherently noisier when you when you depress the the plunger and you you switch in your audio signal there are ways to mitigate that without having to discharge the audio path and a lot of the the issues that people have is that they're they're not sure about exactly how to design the the circuit in such a way where it mitigates that sound now there there's some circuits that have are more prone to that than others um, but uh, is there a way to get rid of it completely? Well, you could redesign the entire pedal from the manufacturer side, which is unrealistic. On most of the switchers, though, they're pretty good about dissipating that. Where they'll, they, some of them will have uh, some loading that they do to prevent that. Some of them will do the thing I talked about, where they'll discharge the audio temporarily until something comes in, uh, in order to mitigate that. Um, sometimes having buffers can help mitigate that. It really is a circuit by circuit dependent thing. It's not a true across the board. So, you know, this is a really simplistic, non-technical way uh, uh, of explaining it. But the, the reality is, is that if there is popping in a foot switch, it's likely a design error. There is ways to make a, a mechanical foot switch like this not pop. Mo almost every one of our pedals is mechanical and if there is a popping problem it's usually because the foot switch has failed that's very rare that that happens but sometimes it does um, and then there are some circumstances where certain impedances and stuff like that can can cause this problem by having weird pedals in and out and again that's where the buffer would come in handy it would it would neutralize that sort of issue but uh, it's not a function of the switch it's usually a function of the device and the design and there are certain uh, switchers that will do that like on the um, on this morning star here it uh, it has like a ability when you turn it on you can determine how much of the popping you want if there is popping to dissipate so it has different levels and so when you turn it on you hold down a certain combination of switches uh, I think like this this button is like the most uh, reduction of pop down to the very first one has the least rejection of the pop or I think it maybe bypasses all together so you have different options and that's just like a, a MIDI controller uh, or a MIDI programmable switcher minus the foot switches so that's a, a design thing more than it is an inherent thing in, in types of switches what are the lead times uh, or will there be pre-made stock available yeah we're, we're gonna have stock available when I'm saying we're gonna we're getting this at the end of the month it's like we're gonna have a stockpile of these ready to go uh, Instagram question will Sweetwater be a dealer yes they will it was me that asked the question, yeah, I mean, I meant out of a power supply. Is it okay to split one outlet out of a power supply? Um, I wouldn't split out, out of a power supply and go to a tuner and a Keeley Aria. No, I would try to give them their own. And I would, if you were going to do the Keeley Aria, since I, I believe it's an analog drive, I would try to compare pair that with another analog drive. Uh, I wouldn't do it uh, in parallel off a tuner, parallel of the tuner out or the, the output that goes to the tuner in that. I've actually had problems paralleling polytunes before, and I've tried, and I, I haven't been able to get it to work, but but uh, maybe you can, I don't know. But uh, I've found that generally it's, it's a problem. And again, if you want to get anything from Fixed Pedal Board's website right now, there's a coupon code Vertex20, 20% 20 off anything on their store page. So just a heads up. Jake Booker, Mason, I have a question. I'm looking to make the jump to a pedal board switcher, and your experience was the easiest to program MIDI on. The easiest one is the gig rig one, but it's very limited in how you can program it. The one I would recommend would be the Boss ES8. Um, and that coupon code, Jack, I think is valid through the week, through this weekend. Thank you, Jeremiah. Uh, where is that island? 
Oh, I don't know. I think that this is maybe Catalina or something. I think this is just what, uh, I think you're talking about a screensaver. I think it's just what Apple was on my computer when I got it. Uh, I think, let's see. I think fixed pedals are selling, yeah, they're, they're selling the same hinged risers or some of them on, on reverb. Um, and those are really just like prototype ones that we made that, uh, you know, because usually when I get a new prototype made, it's they have to use a whole sheet of metal. So they're not just making one, they're making like five, ten of the same one, depending on how big the sheet of metal is. And so sometimes they'll throw those up on reverb, the, the ones that I don't get. Um, all of them are hinged. Every single one that you saw today was hinged. Um, congrats on the pedal boards. Thanks, Nick. Will the tier be hinged? Yep, everyone will be hinged. Any add-on to make the pedal at an angle? Nope. I don't believe in the angle. This is why you have the riser tier. That's your that's your that's your second uh, level. Thank you, Stuart. Lachlan, hey from Australia. Good to see you. Uh, will each size be paired with corresponding tone brushes? No, but that's a good idea. Uh, what size flight case carry-on size? Well. They're, uh, the carry-on size will be the first two sizes. So one and two, which is one is the, uh, the 10 by 17, which is the small size, and the travel size is 11 by 20. Uh, those will both be carry-on sizes. So those fit in carry-on size. Pelican air cases, again, this is the larger of the two. This is the 11 by 20. This is 18 pounds. You know, so in the case, in the Pelican case, it's about, you know, I think it's at seven or eight pounds. So this all together will still be in the mid-20s. You know, so pretty pretty good size in that uh, HX effects is is pretty pretty heavy. Uh, if this were all pedals, it would probably be way, way a little less. Um, just joining. Sorry if this is answered, but will there be any way to fit a helix floor plus have a riser? You would what you would do is you put the floor on there, and you'd actually get one of the riser sizes for the smaller boards, and that would work. Yeah. And, and so you would put the floor on there and then you would get one of the ones that were designed for one of these littler guys, you know, like, uh, like this guy. So you could, you could have like your larger board, you have the helix over here on the larger board and then you get the smaller riser for it because they're all interchangeable with each other. All of them can fit on any of the pedal board platforms. That goes from the smaller ones in terms of their compatibility with larger ones. You obviously couldn't put a wider <laughs> a riser on a smaller pedal board. So I hope that, that, uh, that answers that. Brandon, thank you for the fire. Thank you, Preparna. All right, Nick, Mason, I need a pedal board case. I'm not traveling to be, whoop, not traveling to be honest, maybe two times a year. Uh, I would like a case. Do you recommend any cases that aren't a lot of money? Uh, none that aren't a lot of money, but the Pelican cases are the move. You know, it's again, it's the cheapest insurance policy you can get. Um, Mason, don't know if you get to this, but I really appreciate how much effort you put into assisting others building their rigs. You make everything super clear and understandable. I try to do the best I can, and if it's not understandable, then just tell me and I will try to restate it. <laughs> uh, from uh, Instagram, Chase Napier says, Seriously, Mason, or seriously appreciate you, Mason. Thank you, Chase. Um, certain stage on tour two, very true. From IG, Funk Father says, Saving up for my Nile. Very cool. Thank you for the support. Nigel, what are your thoughts in review of Analysis Plus cables? I think that they sound good. Uh, they can be microphonic in certain aspects, so I think that it would be more of a studio cable, but I, there's nothing wrong with them. I think that it's just like a, it's a matter of taste. As my friend Steen uh, Scridestrup says, it's just a matter of taste. It's not a right or a wrong thing. Um, Jeff agreed after the last two years of touring, I'm never putting a power supply, DI, or other box under a board again. Yeah, it's not a good idea. I mean, unless it, with the power supply, if you have a, a switch mode power supply, you can definitely get away with it because those don't have the transformers in them, or at least most of them don't. Uh, the True Tone uh, CS12 does have a, a, a transformer in it. So that one you'd have to be a little bit more careful of, but like Strymon Zuma, the Chalks DC7, DC10, DC4, those are all fine. Um, no, that's an example of a switch mode power supply. Strymon Zoom will be fine. Uh, looks more neutral for the wah, to have a wah than an angle. It looks more natural to have a wah, uh, have a wah than an angle pedal board. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, all, I'm, all, I'm all about the flat pedal boards. Uh, can I run a right angle IEC with your pedal board? Is there enough clearance under the riser? Well, yeah, you could. You just want to have the, the power supply all the way to the back. You know, because they... 
you just want to have it come all the way to the edge. And then you'd, you'd be able to put your IEC out of out of that. Just like you would on a, you know, any other any other board that, that had some sort of edge on it. Um, from Buddy Blues. Hey, Buddy. In regards to the power supply placement, my power supply on the bottom most certainly is a noisemaker. And again, it's going to depend on the supply. So this isn't across the, this isn't a pedal board thing. This is a supply thing. You have a linear power supply, Voodoo Lab, Pedal Power 2, Voodoo Lab Mondo, Voodoo Lab 4x4. Um, what other ones are, are, are linear? Um, Decibel 11. Uh, these are typically linear power supplies. The only one that's not a Voodoo Labs is the X4 and their upcoming Pedal Power 3. So if you put those underneath, there are going to be pedals that will have a problem with that. And it's very difficult to get rid of that noise. Um, uh, Brent, please explain linear power supply. Is linear meaning lower voltage? Well, not necess no, not necessarily lower voltage. They're just two different compositions of power supply. So I'm going to explain this in a very as simplistic way as I can, uh, and not lose people <laughs> in in the tech. So a linear power supply it uses a transformer that you know is is sort of the the hub the the network that that everything is kind of coming into that is that is you know then being going through regulators and going out to its individual pedals so the issue is that was sort of the the normal style of power supply which is the first kind of power supply that came on the scene for guitar pedal stuff in the mid 90s so this would be like pedal power one stuff like that this has been was the standard for many years uh, as far as isolated power supplies were concerned the issue with it though compared to a switch mode power supply is switch mode can do the exact same thing that linear power supplies can do except they can do it more efficiently so it means they can have more power for the same size power supply it can do it much more quietly assuming that you you're choosing your, your your frequencies that are out of the audio range. This is on the design side, but this is sort of an aside. I won't lose you in that. Um, so they can do, and they can do it with much less heat that they generate. They don't generate heat the same way that a toroid does. And they also are, you know, again, more efficient, smaller, more powerful, and don't have the same issues with electromagnetic fields. For some industries, that's not so critical, but for our industry, it is. So, in Pedal Power 2 compared to Azuma, some people will look at those two and say, well, Pedal Power 2 is just as good. It's from Voodoo Lab. Well, the reality is, is that there might be some conditions where the Voodoo Lab Pedal Power 2 will be fine. But for the same number of outputs, I think it's 8 on the Pedal Power 2 and on a Strymon, it's 9. Because a Strymon is switch mode, every single one of those outputs can be at 500 milliamps. Whereas I think the max milliamps is on five and six on the Voodoo Lab and the unregulated, which I think is, is rated for like 250 milliamps or something like that. So you you don't have any of the outputs that can even match what one output is on the Zuma. The Zuma and the and the Pedal Power 2 are about exactly the same size. It weighs less than half of what the Pedal Power 2 does because there's not a giant transformer inside of it. And it does so without any of the magnetic fields that are produced by the toroidal transformer or the C-core transformer that's inside of the pedal power too. So you don't have to worry about putting stuff on top of it causing noise. You don't have to worry about keeping it away from a wah because the inductor has a sensitivity with the magnetic field. There's all these things that are presented by way of linear power supply. So basically the easiest way you can think of the two is linear is like the old style power supply that everybody used up until a couple of years ago that was the standard in our industry uh, switch mode power supplies have been used for decades in pro audio but we're just kind of making our way there now in the guitar side the switch mode power supplies are the newer fancier lighter more efficient you know uh, more power can put out more current uh, in a smaller package than what their linear counterparts could do and they're much lighter weight and they don't have any of the issues with proximity or sensitivity to other things. So both being equal, I would say go and get yourself a switch mode power supply. It just eliminates a lot of issues for you in terms of noise and allows you to be able to power anything you would want. So I'd say that that's the way to go if you're considering two power supplies. So Voodoo Lab Pedal Power 2, that's a kind of an example of a linear one. Switch mode would be like 
um, Chalks DC7, Chalks DC4, DC10, um, Strymon Zuma, all the Strymon power supplies, all of the True Tone power supplies, except for the CS12 does have a transformer in it for the AC side, but all the other ones, CS7, CX, CS6 are, are all switching supplies. So those would be ones that are examples of that. Sorry, that was a long, that was a long aside. Uh, I hope that that was distilled enough or simplified enough. Um, hey there, uh, this is from Facebook. Jim Schaefer, I wanna make an interface with five inputs on each size. What size enclosure should I use? Uh, you're gonna need the next size up, which is instead of the 1590B, I think it's BB uh, is the one you need. Um, let's see, Jeremiah, I've seen you put pedals right next to power supplies. Why wouldn't you make this the same kind of noise? Well, it depends on the type of power supply. If it's a switch mode power supply, no problem. If it's a linear power su supply, can be a problem. Typically, the, the magnetic field on, because of where the transformers are positioned, is usually on a vertical axis. So it's usually stuff above it, which is more of a problem. And you can actually figure out where the magnetic fields. An easy way to do it is to take your guitar and actually move it around, like a single coil guitar, and move it around your pedal power supply. And you can actually hear where the magnetic field is because you'll, it'll, it'll interact with your, uh, the single coil pickups um, in your guitar. So you can actually tell this, or I have even just like a pickup that's just disconnected from a guitar that I can use to kind of go and help me find the magnetic field. It's just hooked up to a jack. And I can figure out what the magnetic field is if I'm using a linear power supply. But I really try to get people away from them because you're limited in where you can put stuff and you end up having to make the board bigger in some cases just to get stuff out of the magnetic field because uh, it can be a real problem. Um, I think I explained the linear power supply, so we got that. Let's, uh, let's do another giveaway. All right, this time let's do... I'm going to do two of our risers these are the uh these do have hinges it's the older style but it will still work for most pedal boards so i have two different ones i have uh they're really the same same size but i have two different ones so i'm going to do this question for first two people that answer this correctly we're going to get them they're actually yeah they're the exact same size so we're going to give you these risers these are kind of the older style hinge risers First two people to answer this question correctly will win these. So you're, when you win, Mason Mejia is going to let you know that you're the winner in the comments on YouTube. You're going to email us info at Vertex Effects, identifying yourself as the winner. The question that I have, this should be easy for any of you that have just been watching and listening. I want you to tell me two differences between a switching power supply in a linear power supply. It should be an easy one. We just talked about it. What's the two differences, just two of them, between a switching power supply and a linear power supply? What are two differences? Tell us. So you're saying put the power supply separate area of the pedal board. Well, if it's a linear power supply, then I would keep it all the way in the corner away from everything and away from anything that might have any sensitivity to it, if you're going to use one. Uh, MD500 versus Mobius. MD500 all day. Um, would putting it under the riser have the pedals on top of it affect the same noise floor? Well, if you did have a linear power supply, you'd have to be more careful of that. But there is a little bit more distance because you have three and a half inches from the, the wall. But yeah, you could have an issue if you were using a linear power supply. And that's why I tell people you should be getting a switch mode power supply. Zuma, True Tone, Chox, the new Pedal Power 3. I think pretty soon almost everybody's going to be going over to this. So you're not going to have to worry about it for too much longer. But if you have a question as to whether your power supply is linear or switch mode, let me know and I'll, I'll tell you which it is. Um, no, these are examples of switch mode supplies. These are going to be fine. Why does someone need to buy one of these when it looks to be just a flat metal with holes in it? I mean, they don't have to. I'm not twisting anybody's arm. You could uh, you could go and, and, and talk to your local metal fab shop and see if they'll make you one, although I would guess that their shop minimum is probably going to be more than these pedal boards are. Um, you know, but... Uh, 
I don't know why does anybody need a, an angled pedal board with welded, you know, like brackets on it, like a pedal train. It's sort of the same, I think, question from <clears throat> from where where I'm standing. It's a little bit different than just a piece of metal, and also the riser. Obviously, you'd have to have the uh, the ability to be able to bend the metal in the specific way. I mean, I don't know. I guess if it sounds like it's not for you, that's cool. There's a lot of different options out there. I'm just one T-shirt on the rack, and if it doesn't work, just put it back on the shelf. Um, let's see, our Voodoo Lab linear power supplies, all of them except the X4 and the new Pedal Power 3, those are the only two that are switch mode, all the other ones, Pedal Power, Pedal Power 2, Pedal Power 2 Plus, 4x4, Mondo, those are all linear supplies. Uh, would you consider making one with two bridges of different heights? Uh, not the moment, no, because typically the, the 3.5 is sort of the minimum you need to clear uh, a power supply and then if there's like anything if you needed to do like a Strymon Zuma plus Ohi this is kind of the appropriate amount based on like higher pedals have higher knobs stuff like that so 3.5 is the standard across the board I don't think you'd want to go higher than that and lower than that is not really uh, at this point a viable alternative although like I said fixed pedal boards will make you a custom one and I still get a small commission on those if you do order a custom one in this style uh, they're just really expensive any advice for safety checking the boards on a flight? I know they're sort of bomb-ish and ret and a few others have had issues. Well, I think with the hinge riser thing, it'll actually be easier because they could just lift the whole thing up and see what's underneath there. So I'd actually probably disconnect the thumb screws and let it leave it so that they could actually open up and see all the wiring. I think the main thing that people get freaked out about is that if they can't see what's underneath the tier and they're wondering what's there, they, they can't ha they don't have an easy way to be able to look under that. So I think actually the tier might uh, alleviate some of those anxieties. Uh, Bill, any thoughts or plans on selling a, a soldered cables? Uh, no, but there's so many good companies that make those. Uh, you can just go and order your cables a la carte from them. So I, I'm not I'm not in, in that business, but there's lots of people that are. Um, so if you just look around like Mogami 2319 cables, I'm sure there's there's a bunch of people that will make them. What length should the riser be? I think we talked about this one on the, the whammy thing. Uh, any interest in doing your own power supply? We talked about this one also. So, so many good ones I'm not going to do at this point. Pedal Train makes a pedal board backpack. We talked about that. Colors. Uh, black is, is the way that I'm going. That's, that's, that's the industrial standard for pedal boards. I'm sticking with it. Will these available to be shipped internationally? Yes. Yes, they will. They will be available to be shipped internationally. Um, soft backpack would be awesome. It could be repurposed as a bag, fatted camera backpack. All right. Uh, we are going to come out with some buffers. I don't know how they're going to, at what point that's going to happen. So I don't know yet. Uh, will the girls find you more attractive with this style pedal board? Um, I don't know. I don't know. They, you know, they say that, uh, let's see old, the old saying, I, I play, I play jazz because I hate crowds and I hate women. Is that what they, they say? Because no women show up to jazz gigs and no people show up either. <laughs> um, that was an old Bruce Foreman joke. Um, I use the Morningstar MIDI controller, but still activate some pedals old style. You suggest to put MIDI controller pedals over and under the risers and keep the other ones in front. Uh, yeah, so I'd say keep the MIDI controlled stuff under the risers because you don't have any need to, to access them if they're controlled by the controller. So you'd only need to access the stuff that, that isn't in the MIDI uh, controllable um, looper or if you have stuff where you can't program tap tempo or something like that and you need access on the outside or there's a two channel overdrive, something like that, uh, that would be a case where you'd want to keep it outside. Um, will there be an option to incorporate Vertex buffer interfaces into the boards? In the future, there will be. That is correct. What is the bottom of the board like in terms of padding and such? There's rubber feet, uh, a bunch of them, six of them. And these are welded. We have welded standoffs, and then they're bolted into the boards. So there's six of them, heavy duty. Just like you'd find like on the bottom of an amp, you know. Uh, Pelican cases, they are the best. Are these boards that you just buy the riser separately? Yeah, so you'll have an option. So the board will be a base price, and then you can add the risers that you want for an additional charge, or you don't have to have any risers at all. 
Uh, Equipo, thank you. Um, let's see, probably before, but what's going to be the largest size? Largest size is 15 by 29. 15 by 29. Oop, didn't want to do that. I'll leave the rig doctor on there. All right. All right, they look great. Will they be available in the UK? Yeah, so Andertons, I imagine, will have them as well as Guitar Guitar at the least. What do you think about Three Monkeys solderless patch cables? I've, I've made my stance on solderless clear. And uh, I think that the best one, if you, are, if you have to go solderless, in terms of its connection, is the Evidence Audio. Uh, let's see. Will Pelican cases come with pre-plucked foam? It'll be like just a, as though um, we'll, we'll have to do the the pre-plucked on the base level just so the pedal board can fit, and then there'll be another layer that I think won't be plucked at all. Um, presumably, you're buying the Pelican case so this can fit in it. Um, and we might even talk to a foam company about just getting them empty and having them actually pre-foamed. We'll, we'll see about that. <laughs> you can go pluck yourself, yeah. Um, let's see. All right, looks like these are some answers for for the uh, giveaway. Sorry, I'm kind of behind on questions here. I'm trying to do the best I can to catch up. Lots of lots of great answers here. Though. This is great. Um, all right. Let's see. I think we answered this question about largest pedal board size. I think it was like 29 by 15. Um, yeah. Uh, Pastor uh, Akasha, or Akash, this is all on. Uh, we're we're bringing everybody over to to YouTube, so this is a, this is for the YouTube purposes. So I apologize if there was a misunderstanding. I announced it a few times on Instagram, um, but come join us over on YouTube so that you can. Because I have uh, a few more things to give away. Um, all right. Let's see. <laughs> your girlfriend's stoked on the plant game. I know, and you can't even see a lot of them. There's like way more that are over here that you can't see in this shot. Um, the links on the board will be on the website by the end of next week or the end of this week, hopefully. I'm, I'm photographing everything, all the options, all like kind of so you can see like how many pedals can fit on them. They won't be fully assembled or anything like that, like the one I have here, but it'll give you an idea about how many pedals could fit. And I'll use kind of stuff that you would know and recognize in terms of the the... The, the size and stuff like that. Hey, from Colombia. Um, let's see. I was before Tim Brent. Well, so sometimes, this is something we found out from last time, sometimes your comment will show up before the master list shows up. So on your side, it'll look like you answered first because you wrote your, in your name and you posted it. But on our master list, we're going off of what comes in first on our end. Um, not what comes in first in your end because we can't we can't see or verify that in any way. So although you may have been faster than everybody else, we have to go off of what comes in first on our end. I explained that up in the, in the upfront. We had the same difficulty last time um, with some discrepancies there. Tim Britt, buffer question. Does an ABC switch change any of the signal? I was going to put a buffer after it so that all of my guitars hit the buffer before. Okay. ABC, so you're talking about like a AB switcher, but it has a third option. Change any of the signal. Well, it's just it's just extending it a length. But there are some uh, ABC switchers like Lely makes that I think actually have buffers in them if you want to eliminate it there. A passive one shouldn't do too much damage because it's just, you know, if it's just a switch and, th and, and one jack in and then three or three jacks in to one jack out, you should be okay. Uh, it shouldn't be too big of a, of a tone suck. You know, th those are all short lengths. It would just be sort of like I expanding your length, you know. And I don't know which one you're using. Some of them are really simple and would be, have a difficult time causing a problem. Others of them will be problematic. So 
Um, you know, if it's a simple one and it's passive and it's just three in and to one out, I don't think you should have an issue if the buffer comes right after that. Um, when do you get to see the first build with the new boards? Well, I mean, this is a build with the new board and I'm, and I'm making a video of it right now. And uh, I'm going to show also how to program the HX effects with the Morningstar, which is a little tricky, but I got it figured out between the guys at Morningstar and the guys at Line 6. So this is the first one on one of those boards. I didn't use the riser on this one because I didn't need it, but this one is the 11 by 20 and it weighs 18 pounds. So pretty lightweight and uh, super killer. Um, I don't, I don't know, this is probably in reference to some winners that were chosen. Um, but I guess if Mejia chose it, then we're, we're calling it an answer. Um, any plans on making and selling your own interfaces? Well, yeah, we're going to make active ones though, you know, like buffer boxes. Um, any idea on what would cause hum in a room in a house, no matter what kind of pickups are on, no hum until the guitar is connected? Well, turn the guitar volume off and see if it if it's if the hum is gone because if that's the case it's just your guitar in it's the, your guitar is picking up something so yeah that could be a matter of shielding the guitar internally but uh let's uh let's give away this pedal board we're gonna give away this pedal board i think it's time for another giveaway it's a beautiful pedal board i think it's 26 by 14 made by get off my case great pedal board brand new never touched very cool pedal board i'm gonna ask a question we're going to have you answer the questions, and you are the person who answers this question first correctly is going to win this pedal board. I will ship it to you wherever you are in the world. I hope you're in the U.S. because it's cheaper for me to ship it to you, but if you're not, I'll still ship it to you wherever you are. Um, all right. The question I want to ask you is, and this is for people who have been following along for a while, so they got to know. they got to know. they got to come correct on this. What is... One reason, I only want one reason, why solderless is inferior to a soldered connection. This is whether it's your power cable, this is whether it's your patch audio cable. What's one reason why solderless is inferior to a soldered connection? Tell us. That person's going to win this board. So we answered that one. Uh, can I put a screenshot of the size? Yeah, we actually, I think it was in the stories. It might still be. I'll, I'll, I'll repost it again. Dan Hart, Mason, I've noticed that most of your rig builds don't have a preamp style like an EP boost or secret preamp. Seems there on every DIYer's board. Thoughts? I mean, it just depends on what, what, you, what you need them for. I mean, those would, would be... You know, if you wanted to have the Echoplex preamp, presumably you, if you wanted to use it like an Echoplex, you'd put it after everything. It's the last thing before you went into your amp, if you were running in front of your amp. Uh, I don't find them to be, I, I don't find that as an always on sound to be desirable unless you want it for that effect. You know, like if you want to have a mid range boost, then you could use it. But, but I think in, in a lot of cases, or at least in the boards that I'm building for a lot of pros, they're usually looking for their core sounds to be something that that's not an always on thing you know like maybe some of their stuff is but for the most part they have like their gain sound that's high gain a mid gain a low gain sound they maybe have some sort of booster in front which actually i think is a more appropriate place for the disaggregated uh echoplex boosters i almost feel like it's better in front to add saturation to things with that eq and then have a linear clean boost like our vertex boost at the end of the overdrive path uh, to just add volume without changing the color. And so I don't like them for that purposes because I want to be able to use that color change more effectively. And I think at the they were a lot of those preamps, people like them because they had so much loss in their line that it was like the only thing that kind of brought back some sparkle to whatever 60 feet of capacitance uh, and, and all this, all this, uh, this cable length that was that was sucking the tone out. It was the only thing that they could use to really bring stuff back. And now that we've pulled it out, you know, we think that it that it somehow uh, is is this magic thing. And I think it's just a it's just an, another alternative to a, a colored boost. 
And uh, so I, I would, if I were going to use them, I actually would, I prefer them going into drive pedals and using that to add more saturation and gain. And I prefer using a clean linear boost like our Vertex Boost as an example that doesn't have any colors, just adding more volume to be after the drives. That's how I like to use them if I do use them. Um, who would you like to build for in the guitar world? Who would I like to build for in the guitar world? Hmm. Man, you know, I've built for most of my my guitar heroes. Uh, you know, I, I mean, I've been in that camp a lot, although I've never built his rig in particular. I really like uh, I really like to do some some John Mayer rig building. That'd be cool. Um, but you know, the 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 thing I'm more interested in now is less in building the rigs. It's more about kind of getting a, a group of you know we got uh, you know 200 people at, at a lot of times during this watching this thing getting people to be able to build rigs where they don't need somebody like me you know they can watch this stuff they understand it they're able to get the basic concepts you know and just just to be able to see that you know because if i build a rig for a john mayer that's just one rig right that helped one guy if i show you guys how to do it presumably there's hundreds of you that can go and build this stuff or you guys could work on his rig in the future and, and teach yourselves and stuff like that. So that's that's really more what my passion is. I'm, I'm less concerned about the individual rig. I, I'd rather show hundreds of people how to do it, how to do it by the standards and uh, and, and go in and, and, and have that be the pervasive methodology that people are using. You know, I think it'll be good for everybody. Everybody will have good tone. They'll enjoy their pedals more. They'll, they'll enjoy their music more. Um, tips in building my own AB switcher. I mean, there's really not a tip I can give you. There's just there's there's some diagrams out there I'm sure that show how to do this. It's very simple if you're just doing it passively. You know, you have a foot switch and a couple of jacks. And that's it. Um, so I'm sure that you could look up uh, an eight, a basic one. There, it's it's almost impossible to screw it up. You know, um, you could use some of our our drilling uh, diagrams for the jacks if you wanted, uh, and you just had to drill out the ones that were necessary for you. If it's like two jacks on one side and one on the other. And then you just have to drill the foot switch, obviously, which would be different uh, than, than the, the whole pattern I gave you. Um, Matt Spicer, just so we're clear, there is space under the riser and also space under the board itself. Well, there is some space under the board, but I would not use that space as a routing area. I don't. I guess you could, but I'm not recommending that you do it at all. I think everything should be mounted topside. And again, I'll have a lot of videos showing the best practices of assembly, but really you should be treating it pretty much the same way that you would treat a board like this, except you'll obviously have the riser that's hinged that you can get underneath um, so that you can uh, have more pedals lifted up, have access to, to, to more stuff that's, that's under there. Um, is the space underneath the actual, for, oh, for a gig rig generator? I don't know. I, I don't, I don't, uh, I, I don't think that those power supplies are so fragile. I wouldn't want to expose them to anything where it'd be open air like that. Those should be like contained. Um, so I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the size of the gig rig generator either. I've just seen it visually. I haven't uh, seen, I don't, I don't have, I, sh I guess I should say I've seen one because I've worked on some boards that had that supply, but I don't have one to reference. I don't really remember the, the thickness of it. It would be, it would be close, but I wouldn't recommend doing that underneath. Um, uh, thanks, Jeff. Israel, greetings from Puerto Rico. Um, thank you so much, Chris. Any plans on making your own interfaces? Yes, we talked about this. Uh, boards rock. Yeah, Ryan got one of the prototypes. Glad you dig it. The link to the boards will be on the site. If you want to get the most new, up to date news, just sign up for our newsletter. I'm new to soldering, um, using straight plugs, any specific plugs you'd use. I think the square plugs are really good. Square plugs, all one word. SPS5 or SPS4 are the straight ones. And SP, SP500 and SP400 are the right angle pancake ones. And the, those model designations are just based on the diameter of the cable. So you can just look up a spec sheet of your cable diameter and then you can choose the plug that fits best with that. Um, Let's see. Can you do something with shielding for a power supply under a pedal? Well, you, if it's a linear power supply, you could use a lot of steel, um, or you could use mu metal, which is a lighter alternative, but it's really expensive, and you'd have to use a you'd have to encapsulate as much of the power size as possible. It's really not worth it. 
just you'd be better off selling your current supply and getting a, a switch mode one. Um, let's see. All right, lots of questions, lots of answers. Um, Dude HJD, is it important to have both of them in order to preserve signal? I, I don't know if you're talking about buffers here. It's important to have an input and output buffer. Yes, so the first one is 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 controlling your guitar pickup loading. And then the one at the end is used as what some people call as a line driver, driving the line, ensuring the fidelity all the way back to the amplifier, which is the longest individual line of cable anywhere on the pedal board typically. And so having those two at minimum is, is really important. Now you could do, if you listen to our podcast from last week, Steen Scrystrap talked about how he buffers every return on, uh, on his systems. So there's a lot of buffers in those systems, and that's just so he can maintain a constant load going into every single pedal. Uh, and so there's lots of, uh, there's, no, there's no chance for it to lose any fidelity between the uh, boards. Um, or sorry, between the, uh, the uh, I meant circuit boards, but between the devices, the pedals. Um, Emmanuel, uh, hey Mason, thank you for doing these live sessions. I've been a Vertex, I have a Vertex boost pedal and a Boss ES5. Do you think I can use it in place of a dedicated buffer? Well, it depends on where you put it. The buffer in the, in the boost is very close to the buffers that we build normally. It's a very high quality buffer in the boost. If you were using it first as a boost into other stuff to add saturation, that could be a good input buffer. If you're using it last at the end to boost everything at the end, it could be a good output buffer. Um, you know, I mean, of course you can use it in other places and it'll still be great, but you'd still want a high quality input output buffer, presumably, if that's not where you had it living in the signal path. Um, trick, yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, lots of good answers here on the, uh, on the buffer stuff. Um, let's see, we're getting close to two hours here, so I'm going to take as many as I can. Looks like I'm getting, I'm getting sort of cut up. Andrew Reese, I'm looking for a way to split a pedal board into two switchable chains in a way that will allow me to have some pedals in both chains. Way to split a pedal board into two. Well, I mean, you could use a programmable switcher, I guess, or you could do sort of like the Eric Johnson thing where you have a series of AB boxes that are all passive that you do that with. I guess I don't fully know what you mean by this description. So you could always email or put in the comments section more about what you mean by this, and I could try to give you a, a, the best answer that I could. Um, let's see. What are your thoughts on the Goodwood Audio Underfacer? Well, I, I've said that there's a litmus test. There's, a, there's a, a mathematical standard that defines a buffer. One meg input, 100 ohm output, plus or minus, you know, about 50 ohms. So 50 ohms to 150 ohms on the output, one meg on the input. If it's not that, it's not going to resemble what your guitar sounds like plugged into your amplifier. However, some of you don't like that sound. You like your amplifier to have some loss and some roll off of the high end going into it. So that might not be your bag, it may not be your thing. But for most of us, I always say, get everything neutral. And then if you wanna mess with the tone, you can start experimenting with using different cables on the input that have more capacitance to roll off the highs that way so that you can keep whatever is on the pedal board controlled. You know that it's acting as neutrally as it possibly can, and then you can introduce external variables to change that, but you know that your baseline is always neutral. On the Goodwood Audio Interfacer, I don't, I, I don't know their specs. I've had some people ask them what their specs are, and I think that they said it was one meg on the input, which is good. That meets half the criteria. The output impedance, though, they said was 500 ohms. So that's five times higher than what the standard would be. Now, I don't know if that's the one that you're referencing that has the transformer in it. There's another component to this. I don't, I don't see any specs on their site for input or output impedance other than that what people have relayed to me. I haven't measured one myself. There's also a transformer. So there's this question of, well, is this buffer meet the criteria for this transformer? Are these compatible? 
because a lot of the transformers that people are choosing for isolation transformers in their devices, especially on these buffers, is they're really output transformers. And they're, they're not really great at rejecting both hum and buzz. They can do hum within a certain frequency and, and it will reduce a certain number of decibels. Most of them won't do buzz because they're, they're output transformers, not, their, not, their, not their, what they're made for. And these are cheaper transformers, you know, a couple dollar transformers from Mauser from the most part, which is a parts supplier. And so they're not going to be the same quality as a, as a higher quality power supply like a Jensen, but the Jensen's are not really made for this application either. Guitar stuff is so low, the, the, the levels for guitar are, are not really in the range of what Jensen's are even made for. So this is all a long-winded way of saying that we don't know their specs on their input-output impedance. They don't publish that on their website. We don't know the specs of the transformer to know if the buffer is even compatible or the signals for guitars even compatible with the isolation transformer that they have. Now, there may be an option to bypass the transformer if you don't need it, which would be very helpful, but a lot of them just leave the transformer in the stereo, the right output, and you're just flipping the polarity, or they call it phase, I think. You're just flipping the polarity of the transformer. So it's always in, in circuit. And an easy way to see how good the transformer is is run your highest, hottest signal that you would run into the transformer side, and then compare it to the side without the transformer. And I found that on almost all these devices that they distort in the low end. They create distortion that wasn't there on the non-transformer isolated side because the transformer is not specced to the necessity of the guitar signal because a lot of the designers are not sure what the bullseye is because they're relying on other people to design these products for them that don't necessarily play guitar or know the type of levels that are going to be in there, they just know that they need to eliminate some hum and they need a galvanic isolation of one of the sides. And so they just pick a transformer at a price point. And so these are the things that are dangerous. This is what separates the really excellent ones from the mediocre ones. So the truth is, I don't know. These specs are not published. But I've said this before. If you're making a buffer or you're making an ISO transformer in a buffer and you're not publishing the specs, that is like being an automobile manufacturer that's explicit purpose is to build an automobile with the highest safety in their class in refusing to publish the crash test ratings. There's something missing. I don't know what that is. I don't know if that's an error on their part or an oversight. I don't know. But that's, that, that is my feeling on this stuff. The buffer stuff is very cut, cut and dry. It is, is math. It's, it's, if it's a real buffer, it's not changing the tone. It's one to one on either side. <clears throat> um, all right, these are more, we talked about a few of these. Uh, will the boards be available from Tomon? I believe that they will. They purchased them through our uh, German distributor, so I believe that they will. Do you have a goatee because you're the goat? No, I had a goatee because my wife had complained about my Corona beard that I had been growing out since the beginning, so I, I cut it down and kind of trimmed it a little bit. Um, Delay before or after reverb? Oh, this is a good question. I like delay after reverb um, because I like to have the reverb on the repeats. Um, but uh, some people do it the other way around. I don't know. I just I personally like like it that way. A lot of this old studio stuff is like that. So that's my thing. Uh, soul food. How important are shielded power cables? Not that important for for what for guitar stuff. Not that important. No. Uh, I, I'd say, yeah, the low, the low end of that, three or less. Um, what's your favorite amp to use with your Dumble style pedals? Really just clean fenders. I mean, I'm surrounded by them here. I got a Bandmaster, I got a DeVille, I got a Twin, I got a Deluxe Reverb, I got a Concert Reverb under here. Um... Who'd you guys most like to build and have on the show? We just talked about that a little bit, but uh, I, I think my vote was was uh, was John Mayer. I think that'd be cool. I mean, I've done some stuff in that camp before, and I've been on stage with them lots of times in, in their, that team, but I've never actually done a rig for him. So uh, that would be cool. Hello from Atlanta. How many prototypes of your pedals do you go through before you release them? It depends on the, the pedal. This one... I only had to do one prototype because we'd already, it was tried and true. It was at this point, it was really just about making sure that we chose the right frequencies for the jazz rock switch and that the size and everything fit. 
So this one was actually the fewest. But some of them, like the Nile, man, that was like six prototypes with lots of variations in those six. That one was brutal. Um, but some of them, it's somewhere between, you know, and when I say six, it's like six total circuit board revisions. Like when the ones that we get, we usually make a couple of different offshoots in the circuit board so we can load it different ways to try different things based on sort of what the baseline is that we established. Uh, but yeah, the Nile one was a long one. Some of them usually, I'd say more standard is like maybe three, three-ish circuit board revisions and maybe like eight to 10 mods within that. But that's after we're already establishing the standard on a breadboard and, and, and getting the sound down before that. What are the odds of you mass producing a Swiss Army Knife style input output? Yeah, well, we are, I'm doing it. It's, it's happening. Um, how do I join the giveaway? You're going to comment here. In fact, we have 154 people left. We got two more things to give away. All right. So this is one of our hinged risers. I'm going to share this to Instagram. And let's go back and do another live. All right. <laughs> so we're Woo. Hearing myself live again. Let's go live. All right. Cool. All right. So I have a hinged riser here. This one can mount to your pedal board using a 10 30 second machine screw already has pem nuts installed which means it already has a washer and a nut in here that's welded on this can mount to your pedal board this is 3.5 inches and i believe it's let's see this is 20 inches wide 20 inches wide can mount to your pedal board has our full hinge this whole thing will lift up this is pretty cool i'm going to give this one away the question that i have this is for all of you. If you're on Instagram, you want to answer this question on YouTube. You can follow our stories to find that. If you're on Facebook, you can follow this to see where you can answer these questions. What I want to know is, this is the next question. I'm trying to think of a good one here. First person to answer this gets it. Hmm. Hmm. Trying to think of one that's, that's going to get a little harder because this is one of the cooler prizes to win. Hmm. Oh, this is going to be a hard one. All right. When you add heat shrink to a patch cable, is the purpose, or what is the purpose rather? I'm going to give you a few different, talk through my thinking here, because this is kind of, this is like an insider's thing. Is the purpose of heat shrink, is it just to put over the whole entire connector is that really what gives it the benefit or what is the real benefit to using heat shrink on a patch cable what are you trying to eliminate by way of using heat shrink because most people are using heat shrink incorrectly they're making it almost aesthetic but there's actually a reason to use it and what is that reason that you want to use heat shrink on your patch cables what is the real benefit that it's eliminating from the patch cable in helping maintain and endure the road and have more reliability. Answer me that question, and this hinge riser is yours. First answer. Uh, is the Nile also an overdrive pedal? Well, it can be an overdrive pedal. You just have to crank the compressor and lower the input gain on the preamp side, and then it'll overdrive and sound great. It's like the Beatles or Fleetwood Mac type uh, drive where they would overdrive the, the mic pre's. What's the plant behind your right shoulder? My right shoulder. This one over over here? Uh, I don't know. I have to ask my wife. I don't know the name of most of these. Hi there, Mason. Any tips on taking off dual lock from pedals without wrecking the finish? You can use a heat gun. Heat it up a little bit. Or a hair dryer. Is the gig rig generator... Uh, yes, it is a switch mode power supply. Um... The crowbars are good, yeah. Crowbars, interior crowbars. But I think he's talking about getting it off the pedal itself, so that way you might need to use a heat gun. Mason, I'm an E student. I've been fiddling around with uh, breadboarding circuits. What's your process in designing a new pedal? Uh, so I do breadboard, uh, and a lot of times I will socket SMD stuff because we're designing an SMD, and sometimes there's some, some tolerance differences there. Usually it's tire tolerance on SMD. Uh, and I'll usually kind of have a couple of different uh, archetypes that I'm thinking about. I'll put different uh, insert points for different parts of the circuit so I can adjust 
where I want, if I want to try having uh, a boost on the input or a boost on the output, or if I want to put the tone stack in the feedback loop or somewhere else in the circuit, I can make these adjustments and make it kind of modular in that sense. Um, and I'll usually do a couple of them based on kind of what I think the, the vibe is going to be. And I usually narrow that down to a couple. We'll make circuit boards of those, try them out, have the circuit boards have lots of different options to, as ways to load them so that we can adjust parts very easily or we can add in stuff or remove things without it being catastrophic or needing to cut traces in the PCB uh, and just giving yourself lots of options until you can sort of narrow it down to the, the final product. And I think also testing in a lot of different amplifiers, especially the ones that are going to be most common to the, the average consumer of your product. Uh, True Tone 12 has a transformer. Well, it is switch mode. It's like half switch mode and then the AC side. There's a toggle on the back for the AC side, 220 and 120. That side has a transformer. Um, all right, got lots of questions here about, or answers here. Some good stuff about transformers. Um, Mason funky vibe versus dry bell. I mean the funky vibe is, is fantastic. This is my favorite vibe. I'll show you This is my favorite vibe for the vintage vibe sound funky vibe sounds incredible. I love it I got the 68 one I'm building a Hendrix rig right now with this it's gonna have this it's gonna have an Octavia It's gonna have my fuzz face. I have a check this thing. Out. I got a 69 fuzz face PCB <laughs> from my friend Pat. It doesn't have a box, so I need to get a box to put the uh, this guy in. It's got some old uh, BC109 um, transistors in it. So I'm gonna put that on there. It's gonna be a vintage Hendrix rig. I'm gonna do exactly the same. Do the, the vintage Octavia, the Tyco braid, have the vintage fuzz. I'm gonna use this, this vibe. You know, my old vibes, they, some of them sound okay. I think that this one sounds as good as the best ones when they work. <laughs> And uh, they're kind of like old cars. I get them working and they, and they sound great. And then like a few weeks later, they're done. And I have to like go back and fix them and, and, and stuff like that. So I, I like how this sounds really close to them and the consistency uh, is there. So I really love the funky vibe a lot. But I could see where the dry bell would be good if you just needed to get something small. Um, <laughs> when will we get a blackout tone brush? I know I need to do that, man. If anybody wants to take on the tone brush project, I'll split the profits with them. <laughs> um, any thoughts on the BBE supercharger? Um, well, these are these are basically just equivalents to the pedal power two. It was their equivalent uh, of making a, a pedal power two. So it's it's a it's a linear supply. Um, let's see. Lots of good answers here on the uh, linear supply versus switch mode, by the way. As part of the Patreon, can I send you details on my pedal boards and have you troubleshoot them with me? Yes, yeah, so there's two options for that. I think it's like the second and third. One of them's email, and then one of the, the higher cost one is a, is a in-person, like a Zoom or a Skype call. Um, the risers will be available for purchase at the end of the month. Tim Britt, I think I answered this question for you. Um, Dante, I thought it was interesting how much noise was reduced when, pull, when putting Tosin Abbasi's distorted drive thrones to the ES, through the ES8. Would the same thing occur with a noisy fuzz pedal like a super drive? Well, th there's some things that are, are gain that's produced by the pedals when they're on because they're distortion pedals. It's going to raise the noise floor that's inescapable. But Tosin was having issues just because the cabling was not so good and the, the, the pedals had some issues. And so just kind of getting all the pedals cleaned up with the deoxit, getting all the grounding dealt with in terms of the enclosures. Because a lot of the enclosures, they don't ground them. So you have to like ground the, the cases properly. Um, and then just using high quality cables, some decent buffers, and it really transformed it. Now, when he has a high gain pedal on, it's still going to sound noisy. Because just like you have a high gain amp on, it's not going to be quiet unless you use a gate with it or something like that. But then that kind of wrecks the tone. But these are just sort of best practices. Um, all right, Brent, winner. Um, let's see. Uh, see, here. can you make a video on how to make your own MIDI cables? Yeah, that, that's on our list. I promise we'll get there. Um, 
let's see. Oh, and we have one more. We have one more thing to give away. So I'll do that at the end of this. So I have, uh, I have one more board, which is sort of our number three size. This is the I think it's what size is it? Fourteen by twenty-six. So I got one of these left to go. This will be the last thing. I'll give that away when we kind of get toward the end of the questions here. Uh, you're welcome. Horizontal slots on the sides with risers for handholds. Well, you can easily, because you have you have this flange, you can reach into this thing and you can totally pick this thing up because you have enough clearance with the feet in order to do this. So there's definitely no problem with, if you just wanted to carry it at your side, it's not going to be an issue for you. Uh, I'm thinking about building a new board so I get rid of my pedal power Mondo. Well, it just depends on where you're going to put it. If you can, af if you can afford the space to move it away from other stuff, then it might be okay. But if you want to have stuff on top of it, I wouldn't use it. I would, I would get a switch mode power supply. Where do we find the info to order? So you want to sign up. If you want one of these, you can sign up on our website, on our newsletter, and we will let you know as soon as they're available for sale. We're expecting that uh, for sale at the end of the month. Have you ever thought about approaching 3M to have your own? I <laughs> No, I haven't. I'm sure that we're like low on the totem pole as far as consumers of dual lock. I wish they would, though. That would be so cool. Uh, anybody has a connection with 3M, let me know. Uh, new to making cables, what, what in your opinion is the best short barrel straight plug for loopers? The uh, square plug SPS4 or SPS5, they're identical. Just one is for a thicker diameter than the other. Um... Give away your entry in it by answering some questions that I'm going to be asking you. God amazing, thanks. Fun stream, thank you. Yep, that's the one I just recommended. Uh, you'll be able to buy these soon. You can sign up on our newsletter if you're interested. You're welcome. Another buffer question. Since fuzz and wah don't love buffers, would you go guitar, fuzz, wah, input buffer? Yeah, that's exactly what I would do. How about guitar, Zapata's blessed guitar strap? I don't know about the, his blessed guitar strap. Um, oh, if you have noise caused by dimmable lights, just turn off the lights, I guess. I think it's your only workaround, unless you want to have somebody rewire the house. Can the Morningstar work with a Kemper? I wanted to put it in the effects loop. Yeah, it could work with a Kemper, for sure. Patricia, I don't know what this what's ox oxy gib is. I don't know what that is. Oh, oxygen. <laughs> yeah. You've been listening. A lot of people have been listening, man. This is cool. This is great. Wow. So many good answers here. I'm really impressed. People are actually listening to this stuff. This is crazy. Um, let's see. All right, this is Chris. Uh, off the wall question, is there a effect pedal that can make a guitar sound brassy, such as a trumpet? Yeah, Paul Trombetta's tromboner. That'll do it. Paul Trombetta, tromboner. Um, teach a man to fish, indeed. Yes, I have built for a bass player. Uh, no, same cable. Pretty much the approach is about the same. During this lockdown, your videos have got me started building a bunch of things I would have bought previously as well as made my board much better. You're very welcome. My pleasure. Uh, this is a guest tech connection. Sorry, I'm just kind of clicking through stuff. Um, we talked a little bit about the Goodwood Audio a little earlier. Um... Can the bona fide buffer act as an output? Yeah, it could act in either place. You would want you could use it in both places. The only thing it won't be able to do is if you're using a stereo setup, it doesn't have any galvanic isolation. So you don't have an isolated output. But you could use it on a mono system, input and output, or if you had an effects loop, you could use it input, output, and on the return of the effects loop, all that would be fine. All right, uh, Facebook question. Carrie Hotchkiss, uh, is the True Tone CS12 switch mode? It's half switch mode. So like Everything except the AC side is switch mode, but it does have a transformer in there for the AC side. So you have to just be aware of that. Um, but it's 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 pretty minimal. Um, the, the noise comparatively to a linear supply. Um, 
the CS2 and CS3 compressor on the same board for different style guitars, fine. A lot of guys did that. I like the CS2 better than the CS3, but I think it's fine. Um, and the continuation of that is is uh, is uh, if you're running pedals pedals volume hotter, for example, overdrives. What do you do to keep the volume consistent when you turn off pedals and keep the volume consistent? Well, you could use a volume pedal. And you could use something like our Vertex Boost that's connected with the volume pedal that will allow you to control the volume beyond unity gain. So you can use that to taper those things out and still go beyond unity gain and not have an issue. How's the quality of the Tone Bone ABY? It's good. I think a better one is the Laylee, but not a bad one. that's not a bad one at all. Um, I didn't know that the, the Tone Bone had, an, had a buffer, but uh, I don't know. Tell me the specs. It's easy to ter determine. 1 meg input, 100 ohm output. Doesn't meet that. It's not, not that good. <laughs> um, <laughs> take your money. Thanks, Mark. Uh, thoughts on Boss, Wazercraft, Tube Expander. They're, 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 both, they're both good at what they do. I, I think I prefer... I, I mentioned this on our, uh, on our site the other day. My favorite one right now is the... Um, my favorite one right now is the uh, Fryette uh, Power Load. I think that's the best sounding one, and it's all analog. No digital business in there whatsoever. Um, this is from Jai Villanueva Acosta. Black version of the steel string possible. If you set your gain zero to two ultraphonics, would you do the similar tone for the steel string? Uh, no plans for a black steel string, and usually I like setting the steel string knobs with everything around noon, and then uh, putting that after the ultraphonics and putting the ultraphonics, you know, to taste on on volume and gain, and you know, probably the filter straight up. Um, let's see, uh, updates on the songbird, nothing new to report. Uh, John Wilson, Furman and other products help along the lines with any noise going to anything on your pedal board. So I have protection mainly Furman high and civil use. Well, they don't. They're not gonna. They're not gonna fix noise issues within the pedals. They will help to a degree, depending on which one you get of the Furmans. How much uh, of that noise from the wall would go to the supply? But the supply at that point is, if it's a good regulated supply, is gonna take care of some of that stuff too. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, here's the. Some good good people about the strain relief. The 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 real answer that I was looking for. I don't know who Mason he gave the uh, the uh, the the uh, wind to, but it's really about reducing lateral movement is the reason why you use heat shrink. You just don't want the connection to be moving, so it's reducing lateral movement, um, especially like on those pancake connectors. You know where there really isn't a strain relief that's crimping it. Um, let's see, lots of questions, lots of answers there. Um, all right, let's see, any plans to put other pedals in the line of the smaller MK2 chassis? Yes, we're working on many of them as we speak. Not all of them, but some of them, I should say. Um, uh, you're talking about your pedal or your CS12. I mean, you can try it. Try, try putting uh, your guitar over it and seeing if you can pick up noise off the supply and you'll see where the sensitivity is. Uh, let's see. When wiring a new pedal board, two levels, run power cables, uh, run power cables underneath and patch cables on the top or vice versa. Planning on coming up with, planning a upcoming build with the Gigrig G2 and want to do it neatly with the cable timeouts. Uh, well, if it's two two levels, uh, I mean, you, you treat it the same as the as the base level. I mean, you don't, you, you know, you, if this were, if this were the tier, you know, I I just dedicate one line for audio and one line for power, and that's not because they can't be bundled together for DC. It's just that it, it's easier to organize them that way. So usually I put the DC closer to the pedal, the back of the pedal, and then I put the the audio a little further away from the back of the pedal. So if this were my pedal here on the on the pedal board or the riser, 
I would have the DC going closely behind this. You need to make sure there's enough clearance for the jacks. And then further back would be the line of audio. And that's how I would treat it. On, I would treat it the same way on both, both the, the top tier and the bottom tier. Same thing. Adam, maybe a little off topic. Two of my Strymon pedals are making a loud swoosh sound when bypass off. Would it be the low impedance volume pedal adding noise? Not necessarily. And how are they being, how are they being powered? And have do they do this when you take them off the pedal board and try them by themselves? That would be one thing to try because maybe there's something on the pedal board that's exacerbating this. Um, uh, have I thought about making amps? No, that is not that that is not a game I want to be in. Amps are. A very hard business to be in it is probably the hardest business right now in the industry because uh, people aren't buying a lot of amps it's like you know people who buy refrigerators you buy one and you keep it for 10 years people the days of buying like multiple amps is over pretty much so uh, it's a hard place to be in Brandon uh, boss signal at the end of my chain RV5 is that okay way to wrap up things or should I add a buffer yes you absolutely need a buffer the buffer in that boss device is not acceptable for a, a tr an actual buffer. It's not a, really a buffer, even though they're calling it that. It colors the signal heavily. It is not a great line driver. I highly recommend getting a dedicated buffer. Um, let's see. I have a NYC Big Muff Pi, and it keeps sputtering between suppressed volume and normal volume. I don't know why that is. I've tried it on its own, and it still sputters. Uh, I mean, can you try it on a battery? If it's if it's power supply related, that could be one. But it could be a million things. I don't know. It that it didn't really narrow it down for me by your uh, by your description. I'm sorry, I couldn't be more help. Um, will shipping the boards to Europe be an option? Yeah, and our distributors will be carrying them all over Europe, so I have no issue there. Um, okay, yeah, we talked about this one. Um, wow, Morty, you really did. You got it. You got this question a few times. <laughs> Boss pedals are okay. The end of the chain is buffer. No, we just talked about that. Um, you're absolutely welcome. Um, what's the most underrated Vertex pedal? Ooh, that's a good question. We were talking about this the other day. I think that the, the real sleeper in the line is the Tone Secret. People slept on the, uh, have slept on the Tone Secret. It is a great preamp pedal for sure. I mean, like you can get some great tones out of that thing. And if you're used to using those EP boosters or the, uh, you know, the, the, the Echoplex preamps, it's, it, it'll, it'll beat that thing in spades because you have so much more control over the EQ and the distortion amount. And it's really sweet, very 2B, you know, 12, 12AX7 sounding. It's basically like a solid state super reverb in a box. You know, it sounds really good. I think that that is the most underrated pedal that we make. Uh, I have a full tone OCD and it's noisy in my rig even though it's dialed as a clean boost. Is it possible? Well, try it by itself with the battery outside of the rig and if it's quiet, then it's your rig and not the pedal. Anyway, a pedal power supply can power a bass whammy. Uh, well, there's some that will do AC. Um, I would be surprised if it actually drew 1300 milliamps. Like it might say that it draws that. I'd be surprised if it actually did. But like the True Tone CS12 has one AC output. So you could get that uh, off of it and empower it with AC. What do you think of the flat patch cables? I think that they're fine for consumer level stuff. They're just not a pro level thing. But I think it's fine for consumers who just want to wire stuff up fast. I think it's fine. Just got a Mesa dual buffer. The power jack isn't flush with the metal casing. The DC connectors I bought to make my own cable wants to pop out of the pedal. Have you noticed this? Well, sometimes that's done as a way to create some more rigidity by backing it off so that you have the case that the, uh, the cable would go against. I don't know what uh, the jacks are that you used, but they have different length jacks that you can buy too. So there's the standard 2.1 by 5.5. But then there's also longer shaft versions that you can get. So uh, you can check to get a longer shaft if you need a little bit longer to, to, to get it in there. I haven't had that problem though. I'm using mostly like the Strymon. I'm using the molded end at the pedal and I use the, the re-terminated jack at the power supply end though. Do you have a lot of expletive 
or maybe it's experience working on TS10s. Yeah, I do. Um, I'm worried mine's fragile or the button will fail. I mean, everything on that's replaceable, so it's not it's not really a big deal. I usually put them in switchers though, so you don't have to worry about it. You don't, it doesn't take the impact. Uh, are you going to make interfaces? Yes, we're working on it. I don't know if I'm going to make any AV boxes, but I'm going to make buffered interfaces for you know stereo and mono and effects loop and stuff like that. Any DIY tips for making a pedal board at home? I mean, watch the videos. I think that that's the best, more than I could ever explain here. You know, just watch the rig build videos or just listen to them. You know, there's a lot of good tips that are in there. Best place to best place to ask you a question outside of the live feeds. Well, you can always join the Patreon. If that's not affordable to you, you can always ask me questions in any of the YouTube videos or this video. I try to get to all those. What's wrong with my Deluxe Reverb? The tremolo has a clicking that syncs with the rate knob. Well, uh, if your tremolo is on, then it will, will likely do that. You can disable it by shorting an RCA connector and putting it in the back. Or if you have the foot switch, you can disable it there. Um, sometimes people... They unplug the foot switch, but they don't uh, disable it first, and so it, it still stays in the circuit, even though you've got it turned off. So it's not uncommon, though, if it's on, and even if you turn the knobs off, you might still hear it coming through. Mason once uh, fried a Strymon pedal with 18 volts instead of 9. I understand that they have a diode on the input that would prevent this and only cost pennies. How can I do it myself? Well, they probably use like a Zener. And there'll be probably a resistor that's tied to that. It's basically like the equivalent of like a fuse, you know, like an amp would have a fuse. Uh, you'd have to ask them. They probably will not tell you because they'll want to service it themselves, which is common. But if they will, then you want to ask them what what the, the number uh, is of those parts. And you can replace those parts. So they'll tell you like, okay, you're going to go to Q1 and you're going to go to R13. And that's going to be the positions that you would replace for an over voltage. But I would be surprised if they t if they tell you that. Um, so I don't, I don't know though the answer to what they'll tell you. Um, can you have too many buffers? Absolutely. Uh, I have one on my input junction, three available in the PVC buffer bypass available. Yeah. So on the PVC, if it's a mono system, I'd say one on the output and one on the input. If it's a stereo system, I you would want to have one on the the on both outputs. I don't know if on the PVC. I don't remember whether you can arrange to have two output buffers for left and right. Um, but uh, the buffers in the in that device, I don't particularly like. Although I know that they've said that you need to have the input buffer active in order to maximize the ability for their switching matrix to work. So you at least have to have their input buffer on. Uh, but uh, yeah, their output buffers, you would want to have one on each side. Or you could, if it was a mono system with a with the effects loop, you could use one of the buffers on the uh, return of the effects loop. Um, tone bender versus fuzz face. I, I, I'm a fuzz face guy, but a lot of people disagree with that. Uh, can the Morningstar ML5 work with a pedal like the... T yeah, it can work with any pedal. It doesn't matter what the pedal is. It's, it's just switching it in and out like a true bypass looper. And you just have a foot switch. And instead of a foot switch, you just have a push button that you're triggering through MIDI. Um, so yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, oh, with the second side. No, can't do the second side. I don't know if, if that's an AB or if it's two exact foot switches. If it's just a momentary switch, you can take out the jack and or you can take out the foot switch and put a jack in there that you can trigger with the amp switcher. Um, but if it's an actual four pull double throw or you know equivalent then no, you wouldn't be able to do it. You'd have to have Jesse or you can mod it to put a second set of inputs and outputs. So there'd be like an in and out for foot switch one and an in and out for foot switch two, and then you could activate it that way. Um, it needs a longer shaft for sure. This is going back to that that thing. Uh, yeah, so you could buy ones with longer shafts than the 5.5. Uh, we talked about that. I'm having issues powering a big pedal board with MXR talk box. It actually doesn't require one amp. I've measured this because I just built four identical pedal boards with an MXR talk box for Don Felder of the Eagles. And uh, it only draws like 200 milliamps. So you don't even need that to do it. You don't need it. Um, you don't. Need, it will work off of one of the 18 volt outputs from your Zuma. You don't even need two. So 
I, I, I tested it with a milliamp tester. I've tested it with all my instruments. It doesn't draw that much. So I'm not sure why they're saying, why they're saying that. This guy buffers. Uh, you're welcome for the help. Uh, yeah, my, my advice stands. Check out the... Uh, oh, not, not a real guy. Like the ones you're giving away today. Oh, well, the boards like that, the, the wood ones you could definitely make. You're just going to use like a countertop material like Formica or um, uh, Phylon to laminate the top. And then the bottom is ABS, which is like a petroleum-based plastic. You're laminating that to a piece of... of three quarter inch or half inch ply and then you're using uh, aluminum extrusion or u-channel around the circumference um, I bought a Zuma recently the power cable seems to be ridiculously wobbly inside the enclosure ceramic support says it's all normal I was a bit disappointed well those jacks are pretty standard I mean I don't know what you're can versus what I consider wobbly but uh, those jacks I mean you could go with a, a chalks version which has uh, RCA jacks on the supply and those are really solid um, different way to do it. Uh, I have the Vertex Boost Nile Steel String Ultraphonics. What other would you recommend? Any issues with using these together? No issue using them together. Uh, I would say the next one you should either get is the HRM, which is like the uh, like a Marshall voice dumble, or I would say check out the Tone Secret. I think those are two. The Tone Secret is kind of a sleeper. Uh, HRM is tried and true, really great. Everybody seems to love that one that tries it. Um, do you, do you parts, I don't, I don't have parts listed for this, no, but a four, a three pull double throw switch and, uh, three jacks, like the, the jacks that I've listed would work. I don't think I've listed any foot switches, but alpha makes a good three pull double throw switch that would work. You built for Don. I did. Show the boards again. Uh, finger, fingers Felder. That's awesome. Felder's one of my favorite. Oh, here comes Zeke. Hey, Zeke. Hey, Zeke. All right, I'm going to show the boards one last time. And then I'm going to give away. Actually, let's do the giveaway now. And then we'll do we'll do this one. All right. All right. So here's, a, here's the last question that I'm going to ask. I'm trying to think of a good one here. Hmm. Ooh, this is a good one. This is a good one for some of you who have been watching for a while. All right. <clears throat> so there are power supplies. This might even be too hard. We might not get any good answers unless the electric engineer guy, or the electrical engineer guy is still here. He might get it. So on power supplies, like the Voodoo Lab pedal power and some other ones, there's a SAG control, which is supposed to emulate a battery, right? But there are two things that... A carbon battery, the battery that really makes a difference in sound on overdrives and stuff like that. There's two components to it. And the SAG control only controls one of those components, which is voltage. What's the other component that is a part of a carbon battery other than voltage that has an influence over the sound? There's voltage, and then there's this one other thing. What is that one other thing? First person to answer that correctly. Oh, looks like we already got somebody who answered it. Voltage and current. That is correct. That's uh, <laughs> voltage and current. Oh, Zeke, you want to go potty? You want to go potty? All right, Zeke had to take a pee break. All right. So we got a winner for the pedal board. We'll send that over. So uh, make sure that you get in contact with Mejia and uh, we'll get this guy over to you. All right. And let's answer these last few questions. And then uh, we've done over two hours already. So uh, here we go. Um, The giveaway, you just answer the questions, like we just asked. But that was the last item. I'm really sorry you came later. Um, all right. Yeah.
My favorite drives are an OCD BB preamp. What vertex pedal would you recommend for my first? Uh, let's see. We'll go well with those. I'd probably say to go with uh, either, I'd say the steel string would be a good one because these are, these are both higher gain. Steel string is kind of a low, low gain. So I think it'd be good, good different. Oh, see, sorry, dude. I put my pedal board in your bed. There you go, buddy. All right. So that was, uh, that was the show for today. We had lots of good giveaway items. I'll get all those out as soon as possible. Sorry, I'm just putting my pedal board down here. And uh, I appreciate everybody who uh, who participated today. We had a lot of participation. And, uh, oh, well, the Vertex pedal boards come with dual lock. No, they won't. Um, but uh, I will give you all the resources you need to get that. So today, if you uh, enjoyed this, I would supremely appreciate a thumbs up. You can do that right at the bottom of the uh, the viewing window here. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. It may seem like it's a trivial thing or you don't want to affiliate yourself with any particular channel because you want to be free of any labels. But I can assure you that it is very helpful to us to let you know when we come out with new content, we're doing new live streams like this. So I highly recommend that you do that. If you haven't already, leave us a comment. Tell us whether you like the stuff, whether you didn't like the stuff, if you have additional questions. And remember that we have our Patreon page if you want to participate. We have three different levels, as low as $4.99 a month, up to $49.99 a month. The higher tiers allow you direct access to me uh, through email and Skype, depending on what you have, or Zoom. And so please check those out. Again, we also have our podcast, which we launched. That's available on Apple. That is also available, not there, on Spotify, as well as all the other podcast locations that you might find your podcast. So definitely check that out if you haven't already. Uh, and have a great week, guys. Monday's off to a bang, man. We did we did good today. We had a lot of people, a lot of participation. I really appreciate uh, all you guys chiming in. So see you later. And see you guys later. And see you guys later. <laughs>